So who who just shared their screen? That way we can uh, go Bruce. back. Howard, how are you? Where's hey, Howard? Howard? It's Peter and everybody just checked in. Oh, hi, Rick. All right, Peter. Hey, hey. Krista, how are you? Thanks. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Joyce, can you, Joyce, can you say something so we can make sure it works? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Perfect, yes. Works great. So, so who, who uh, I think Howard, you shared your Howard, screen. So Howard, yeah. yeah. Committee yeah. member Brody, if you can um, shoot, click the stop sharing button on the lower right part of the screen. I think in this case, it's at the top. Or at the top. Yeah. I don't know where my... Are we sure that's Howard? Yeah, it's your, it says you're viewing Howard Brody's okay. screen. Yeah. But I don't see any image of Howard's or his screen. Not yet. Okay. Um, does he have the Zoom? Does he have the Zoom app on his phone? On his on his computer? Yeah, he's up. He's up on his computer. He's live. Um, Does maybe anybody have his from? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna call him. Yeah, that was my suggestion. There we go. Uh, it looks like he's moving his browser. Howard, if you can hear, if you go to the very top of the screen, it'll allow it'll it'll pop up a new uh, tab, and then it allows for you to unshare. What's that? Yeah, there we go. There Are you go. controlling my screen? <laughs> oh, for me, the share screen button is at the bottom. The bottom, okay. Yeah, but it really depends. Yeah, I use Apple, so it might be different. Yeah, I can see that. Eva, are you there? I am. Uh, I, I think I may a, have the option to stop Howard's screen. Yeah, you can. You're from, you're the host. So you're the host, so you have the option to remove that. There okay. You there you go. Okay, so uh, I'm going to, now that everything seems to be working, I'm going to log off um, and I'm going to have Eva take over the meeting and uh, hope everything works well. Uh, I will probably chime in here and there just to kind of see, make sure things are going okay. Um, but uh, good luck, everyone. Okay, great. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. See you guys. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Go Appreciate it. Okay. Okay, that's good. So, Eva, can you mute? All, can you mute all? Can you select mute everyone, and then we can get started this evening. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to mute all, but I need sure. to unmute you though. That's what I can. I, I'll yeah, I'll unmute. Okay, so everyone is mute and we can um, start the meeting now. Perfect, all right, uh, thank you. Um, welcome to the design review committee meeting. Uh, today is uh, May 20th, 2020. Um, we are in a new era <laughs> and we are gonna be conducting this meeting this evening over Zoom. Um, I'd like to just, uh, first, we would still like to say the Pledge of Allegiance, so if you can all join me in that, that'd be appreciated. Uh, put your right hand over your heart. Ready to begin? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, of America and, and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you.
Uh, Peter, you can go on mute, please. Thank you. Um, so for the first, uh, I'd like to have a roll call for this evening. Sure. Thank you, Chair. Um, committee member Howard Brody. Okay, um, Kevin, um, let me go ahead and unmute everyone sure. first. How do I? Okay. Give me just a second. I'm actually having some issue with unmuting people. Virgin, your dog is barking. <laughs> hey, Eva, can you hear me? Yes, Rick. Um, I think I we're am... all muted. Okay. Okay, just a little bit. going to be talk to you. Those that is. Okay. I believe I have all of the DRC committee members unmute. Um, we should be able to continue without any issue. Thank you very much, Eva. Mm -hmm. um, so back to roll call, is uh, committee member Brody on? Howard, can you hear us? Well, it shows present on the participant, Eva, so maybe um, we can reach out to Howard via text on his phone and see if he can respond that way. Okay, we'll do that. Hi, Howard. Can you hear us? Okay, it seems that you are a new, so we should be able to hear you. Okay, can you hear us? Okay, you can hear us, but okay. we cannot hear you. Yep. Thanks. Okay. okay. Um, I will start a uh, message on the group chat with you, and I can keep you um take you along for the meeting. That way, hopefully the, um, the program will catch up and you'll be able to hear us. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll count you as present then, in that case, since you're able to hear us. Okay, I will get off the phone now. Okay, thank you.
Chair, I just received a call from committee member Howard Brody. He is able to hear us. However, we're having issue that we're not able to hear him. So okay. I will continue on with the roll call. Um, Howard Brody is participating and he is on the screen. He can hear um, the, the meeting. And next will be committee member Lacon. Here. Thank you. Committee member Peter Wong. You gotta unmute, he's on mute right now. Peter, you're on mute. You just have to unmute yourself. And... There it is. Peter, can you unmute yourself on the screen? There you go. Okay, Present. <laughs> okay, we have right. Peter. Um, and alternate committee member, Rick Chow. Here. Thank you. Vice Chair um, Batnich. Uh, Joyce, you're muted here. now too. <laughs> um, this here, is, there you go. She's okay. I, I, I was <laughs> muted by you know some someone else at first. Yeah, likewise. Okay. okay. Um, and Chair Chang. Present. All present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we'll first discuss uh, the agenda has been posted for 72 hours prior to this meeting. Uh, it is posted at City Hall, uh, the P Crowell Public Library, as well as the Recreation Department. Um, and the agenda is also posted at the city's website. So um, just so that the public's aware, the agenda is posted at the public uh, uh, city locations. Um, next, we'd like to discuss uh, just the executive order that has us doing this this evening. That's a uh, pursuant to executive order N3320 and N2920. In accordance with the governor's executive order and given the health risks associated with COVID-19, this public hearing will be conducted via teleconference virtual meeting without a physical location from which its members of the public may attend. Members of the public may access the meeting electronically uh, via this um, Zoom address. Uh, and members of the public may participate in the public hearing by submitting written comments to Eva uh, and, and Marlon Cervantes, the assistant planner, uh, at their email addresses, um, which are available online. Comments received prior to 4 p.m. on the day of the meeting will be reported to our to the committee and included in the public record. Commented, comments submitted during the meeting uh, and received prior to the close of the hearing will be read out loud for a maximum of three minutes during the hearing period. Uh, in order for this to be expedited and uh, to be orderly, we will be taking, uh, keeping time and limiting any public comments during the public comment portion to three minutes. So um, just please be aware of that. Uh, also be sure to include your name and agenda item you will be addressing. Um, I'll first go, uh, finally, I'll go over the, com the procedures and protocols of the meeting this evening. Each committee member has received plans and has reviewed every item on the agenda and has visited each site. The general order for hearing each case will be as follows. The committee will ask staff any questions they may have. The chair will then ask the, committee, the applicant or the applicant representative to comment on the proposal. The hearing will then be open to the public and the chair will ask for comments for, against, or about the project. In all cases, you may submit your question, but at that time, please state your name and address. At the conclusion of the public comment portion, the public hearing will be closed and no further comments from the public will be accepted. The chair will then ask for comments from each committee member. If there is no motion for approval or denial, uh, the DRC has the option for continuing the application to a future meeting. In the event of a denial, it's hoped that the applicant will have heard comments during the public comment period and during deliberations that will be useful in resubmitting an application. It is important for the property owner to understand that once a project is approved by the DRC, the drawings do become legal documents. If any changes are made to the project subsequent to approval without attaining proper approval of those changes, the property owner is in fact breaking the law and has a risk of having to change the project back to the originally proposed design or paying a fine to the city of San Marino equal to or greater of 5% of the project valuation or $2,500 and then resubmitting those changes back to the DRC. It is also important to understand that there's a 15 day appeal period uh, after an action has been taken for the applicant or any interested party to request the planning commission to review and act on the case. After all the agenda items have been heard, two design review committee members will conduct an open forum. Uh, at that time, the rep residents or representatives may ask committee members about current or future projects related to their property. Committee members can discuss the design with you, but cannot comment on how they might vote on the project. Uh, that is the 
procedures and protocols for the hearing this evening. Uh, at this time, we will move to public uh, comment. If there's any public comments on non-agenda agenda items, uh, now would be the time. Or, or, I, or Eva, have you received any, uh, any requests to make a comment on non-agenda items? Thank you, Chair. I would like to report that staff has not received any public comment um, to report for this evening. Thank you. Okay. Um, seeing no, no, no one in the audience, at least from what we can tell, we will close the public comment portion and move on to the agenda for the evening. Uh, we'll move to the first agenda item, design review case number DRC 1996. Uh, staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. This item is for um, the property located at 2851 Shakespeare Drive. This is a um, second hearing for this single story addition item. At the first hearing, the committee found that the first floor extension is inconsistent with the existing neighborhood. Um, the applicant has since reduced the, the first floor extension by nine feet, which effectively um, addressed the community's concern. Staff is able to find a project compatible with the neighborhood. Um, however, there are three condition that staff would like to propose tonight to make the building compatible with itself. Um, these are one, that wood shatter shall remain at its current location on the building. Two, is that existing windows shall be replaced with a pre-approved material and shall match the existing window shape, size, style, operation, and grid pattern. And finally, number three, the existing brick apron ties into the front facing windows shall be preserve or replace in kind. Um, with these conditions, staff is able to support the project and recommend approval for you tonight. Thank you. Chair? You're muted. No. Um, Kevin, Kevin. Thank you. I don't know why it says I got muted, but can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Are there any questions from the committee members uh, regarding this project um, for staff? Seeing none. Uh, yes, Rick. Um, quick question for the staff. Uh, says the uh, existing windows will sh shall be replaced. So does that mean that they are replacing all the windows? The, ar the architect had indicated that the project will not replace existing window. Um, however, the plans is not clear on this issue. And staff is providing this condition to ensure that if all of the window are to be replaced, that the committee will um, know that the new window will have the same shape, operation, and uh, grid pattern as the existing windows. Yes. Understood. Understood too. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions for staff from committee members? Yes, Peter, you need to unmute yourself. Eva, do you have to unmute uh, Peter? Maybe he, he needs you to unmute him. Eva? Yes, I am looking for Peter at the moment. And, okay. Um, you know, the mill function, yes, okay. Peter is Am on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go ahead, okay, Peter. Thank you. So for staff, uh, since the expansion at the back is going to use some of the existing lawn area, so what is the um, impervious area as a result? Staff has not calculated the total impervious area in the weir yard for this project, partly because the code does not provide a, a limitation on that percentage. Um, the codes only address impervious area in the front yard. Okay, so there's not overall uh, property impervious area ratio required? No, only Got in it. the front yard. Any other questions? Seeing none, uh, the applicant is, if they're present, uh, they may speak to the changes that have occurred since our last hearing? Uh, um, I don't know. Um, my architect 
Um, Mr. Michael Chan, is he speaking? Michael Chen, yes, he is present and he's unmuted. So if Michael Chen, is that Michael Chen you said? Yes. Uh -huh. Oh, hi, Mike. Uh, I see you. Are you available to speak about the changes you've made and then we can move on? Uh, yes. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Um, this is Michael Chen. I'm the, the architect of this house edition. And um, I believe that uh, that one first I want to clarify. I believe the owner wants to change all the windows. <laughs> so because the, the existing window is raw iron window. Oh, uh, yes. You can't find those windows anymore. So the, the new windows will be aluminum clay the wood window. And uh, the whole house, including the existing house, and the addition will be all the same. That's one thing I want to clarify. And the other two conditions, uh, the wood shadow will be remain, you know, nothing will be changed on the existing house, the front, the side elevations, nothing will be changed. And um, the, the other conditions that uh, the staff recommend there's no problem as far as I know the owner have no problem to comply so if you have any other question uh, I have, like thank you very much uh, are there any questions from committee members uh, for the applicant Krista I'm sorry. My needed, um, the color of the window I don't believe was I couldn't find it uh, indicated on the plans I'm assuming it's an off white what? Yeah, I believe it's off white. Yeah. Off white. Unless they don't ask. Any other questions? Uh, Joyce? Uh, will the grid pattern of the windows remain the same and everything else remain the same? Because if you're going from like a iron or steel windows to, to uh, you know, a wood clad, aluminum yeah. clad windows. Aluminum clad wood window, yeah. And aluminum. Can I say something? Hmm. Can I say something, yeah, please? Window, yeah. The windows are pre-approved Pella architect, architect series. So um, they, they will be the same as the shape and the greeting will be the same as the existing one. It's already been pre-approved by San Marino City. Go ahead, Camila. Uh, Camila your to clarify, the Munton size will be the same, the grid pattern will be the same, the placement of the windows will be exactly the same, the casements, uh, everything. Yes, it will be like full replacement. Did the same thing, it just used the same opening. We replaced with the new windows because the, the old windows are all rotten. Mm. Yeah, and the wood frame outside will be the same. Just the window itself will be replaced with a new window. Okay. I think I can say, ask her a question. I think the probably, probably some of the confusion is that the picture on the plans uh, shows a different grid pattern than what is originally there. Yes. Causing some of the confusion. Correct. Because we, Appella does not, does not, Carry that grid anymore. I, I so spoke to the cell man. So, so they're going to be custom made, custom made to fit. I don't know if they they be able to do that because that's part of the. Uh, I would comply to 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 the to the request, but I don't know if Pella would do that to us. Would would do that for yeah. us? Vice Chair Banish, you had another question to clarify, or? Yeah, I, what I understood when I asked the question before is yes, we will be replacing it with exactly the same. And now I understand the thing, Pella doesn't make those, so they won't be the same. So maybe I misunderstood, but can you clarify that further? So, I would uh, like to comply for, but. Okay. So the existing windows, they are, they are casement windows, correct? They are. So, so uh, Vice Chair Bandage, is your concern that they're replacing 
casement windows with the same number of divided lights for like for like, or you're asking for a direct replacement, uh, like replicating exactly what is existing. Because it, it sounds like they're going to provide a casement window with the. Uh, is it going to be the same number of divided lights? Eight jobs on the edge, and we're for number four. This is number two. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. If, if whoever's not speaking, if you can go on mute. Right, we're done. I appreciate it. Uh, can the architect specify, uh, Mr. Chen? It, it, can you specify regarding the windows? Do you have any insight? Dan and Hsu in there. I I suppose that I. That's the only what the only ones that is the, the uh, is there any other window company that uh, that 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 they will, they will make make the window that the owner that the uh, that will exactly match that I I really don't have any idea the the front house we we are not changing anything you know the you know for, uh, the the front the side of the house uh, the the. The addition actually is in the rear, you know, you won't even see that, you know, you won't see the addition from the, from the front, even, so I don't know, is, is that a big a deal that, uh, that it, the window? So, so the for the purposes of, of this hearing and just for the expediency to address the committee members' concerns, yeah. um, there, you have a specified manufacturer and it, you have a note saying that the existing edge and trim details will match the existing windows. Yes. So to, to, to address the committee members' concerns, uh, committee member Krista and Vice Chair Banage, are you asking for an actual submittal of the, the, the design of the drawing, uh, windows in order to, approve the, to further approve the project? Is that what you need in order to make a decision? Or is the note in the plan sufficient? Well, are you talking to, are you talking to us? Uh, either, either vice chair or uh, committee member Lacon. Uh, I, would, I would like it specified, especially hearing that Paula doesn't make windows that size because these are unusual size um, openings. Um, the bay window has 35 openings, um, which is much larger than the 12 indicated. And the, well, they custom made, they custom made those. One more thing, the other, the other side, the east side, uh, east side uh, front massing has a, a brick facade. And the window fits in the brick and has a brick apron, so I think the house would um, be better suited architecturally and within the same size. I think it'll alter too much of the front. Okay. And we do make we we do make the windows still. I left it out because I was supposed to go with, to Debbie's house, but uh, uh, we have a we have a there's, still, there's a steel company on the uh, pre-approved list. Hey, hi. Just take mine. Hi, Eva. Can you mute uh, the other parties uh, that are not part of the committee member discussion? Um, yes. Thank you. Okay, I'm done. Thank you. Vice Chair Banich, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would like also some clarity uh, on exactly what you plan to use. Uh, that would be helpful because there seems to be some confusion as to what you will do and Pella doesn't make the windows and that kind of thing. Okay. Chair, if I may offer a comment. Yes, please. Um, the applicant is allowed to use any product on the city's pre-approved list. Um, the, the end goal is that rather if the applicant wants to use Pella window at one part of the home and then other um, product on another part of the home. Staff only needs to make sure that all of the window after installation looks uniform and consistent and they are the same color with the same treatment. Um, if we are to approve the project tonight with the condition that staff has proposed, um, it, it will allow the applicants to go to another product on the list if they find out that Pella will not be able to provide a consistent appearance or um, window design as the current windows. Okay, thank Instead you. Instead of uh, asking an applicant to come back. Thank, thank you. you, Eva. So, that's it. Right, that, sure. That's fine with me. That's okay. that's the reason why right. I didn't quite so understand let's, that. Let's let's note that condition if there is a condition for approval, and we'll make that a condition. Okay. Uh, thank you. Are there any further questions for staff from committee members? I mean, sorry, not staff to the applicant. Seeing none. Uh, thank you very much.
Now we can open up to public comments. If there's any public comments that Eva you've received, or if there's anyone online that likes to speak, uh, now would be the time. Um, Sarah, anybody... we, we received no additional public comments. Okay, thank you. Okay. Seeing no other uh, public members that'd like to make comments, I'll close the public portion and move to committee member discussions. Uh, committee member Laycon. Um, thank you very much. I, I find the project is fairly straightforward. I appreciate the addition being in the back of the house and the uh, front uh, appearance and architecture staying the same and I find it compatible with the neighborhood. Uh, and I uh, also agree with the three uh, the three conditions that staff has recommended regarding the shutters, the windows, and the brick apron. So um, I would be able to support the project with these conditions. Thank, Thank you. you, Committee Member Lacon. Uh, Vice Chair Vanish. Uh, yeah, first I want to say, oh, am I? I'm not, I'm not muted, right? I'm good. No, you, no. Go ahead. Okay. So first I want to say it's great to see 12 approval letters on an application. Um, I only wish that there had been a neighbor <clears throat> response from the next door neighbor to the east, but I can only imagine that you did try since you got 12 approval neighbors, um, 12 other approvals. And I think with the changes that you made, there is really little privacy concern. Um, so the last time, just as mentioned, our feedback to the applicant was that the long kind of wing that extended back into the yard um, sort of chopped up the yard in a way that was incompatible to the neighborhood and itself. And the applicant definitely corrected this. I think removed nine feet from the wing, which was certainly adequate to solve the problem, and shifted some massing in order to make it more compatible with the neighborhood and itself. Um, so I would be ready to approve this project this evening as long as we incorporate those three uh, conditions that were mentioned um, in the staff report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, committee, committee member Wong, uh, you're unmuted again. Can, if you can unmute, or if Eva, if you can unmute committee member Wong. Okay. Am I... uh, no, actually, according to me, to my screen, he is unmuted. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Am I good to go? Member. Yes. Great, thank you. I'll make it short. And I agree with my colleagues that it's a fairly straightforward case. I also appreciate the revision and compromise made by the owner. And I see this uh, uh, approvable case with condition, conditions mentioned by my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Eva, have you received any comments or questions or uh, comments from committee member Brody? No, I have not. Okay. All right. Howard, if you have any comments or questions, I know you can hear us. You can text or call. Uh, Eva and give her your comments. Otherwise, uh, we will um, will continue. Uh, and committee member Chow, any Chow, any com comments? No, uh, I will also make it short because all the points have been addressed by my colleagues, and uh, I agree with um, all the concerns and and approvals and suggestions. Great, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I'm in agreement. I think it's a good project. I think um, uh, having addressed the other committee members' concerns with the rear footprint uh, to be more aligned with the neighborhood is great. Um, uh, we appreciate that. And I think it will uh, be an addition to the overall neighborhood. Um, do we have a motion? You may remember uh, Vice Chair Banage. I think we have to unmute her, Eva. Okay, there you go. Can you hear me now? So sorry. No, yes. I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, so I move to approve design review case number DRC 19-96 um, with the three conditions that were noted in the staff report. Is that enough to say or do we have to read them out? Because staff had already read those conditions into the record that um, your motion is sufficient. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Did you also want to add the additional condition about the windows uh, consistency? Uh, my impression was that that had um, been sort of incorporated into the conditions that were noted by staff, but if I'm wrong about that, yes, maybe staff could just clarify that. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, do we have a second? Committee member Lacon with the second. Roll call, please. Maybe this is what we will do. We will um, have you um, set out on this meeting. You do. I, I just send you a text from my um, cell phone. If you have comments, you can text text that comments to me. 
However, um, we um, we are going to have um, Rick Chow as the voting member tonight because he has the audio and he can um, join in on the on the call on the meeting uh, on the meeting. Would that be okay with you? Mm -hmm. I just want to say you guys are doing an amazing job so hard, um, mm -hmm. particularly with all the parties participating. It sounds like uh, I am having an issue with the um, mute function as well, but I think more so um, maybe we can take a look at your um, computer system prior to the next meeting. But um, in the meantime, I'm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor Shepard. Um, I, I think we caught um, most of the issue with, um, We appreciate facilitating this uh, for us in order to continue. Um, anyhow, uh, but I'm business. going to get off the phone and I'll let the chair know that you're having issue and we are going to have um, committee member Rick Chow vote for tonight. How okay, I'm sorry, Howard. Okay, thank you. All right, Eva, are you back with us? Yes, I'm so sorry. I apologize. Okay. I just received a phone call from committee member um, Howard Brody. Um, we are having technical issue. He is hearing um, us um, in and out. So um, I have um, consulted with committee member Brody, and we um, agree that the best way forward is to have um, committee member um, sit in during the meeting. However, since we're not able to receive his um, audio, um, we will have um, alternate committee member Rick Chow do the voting tonight as a voting member. That's if fine. You're okay Thank with that. Thank you. Yes. And um, we, um, I apologize that I left the meeting momentarily. We were, um, we had a motion on the floor by Vice right. Chair Batnich to approve the project with um, three conditions proposed by staff. And um, do we have a second? There is a second by Committee Member Lake. Thank you. Okay, and I will be doing a roll call. Um, yes, please. Alternate committee member Chow? Yes. Committee member Wong? Yes. Thank you. Committee member Lacon? Yes. Vice Chair Page? Yes. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move on to our next agenda item for the evening Design Review Case ERC 18 59 615 La Mirada Avenue. Staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is again a second, the second hearing for this project. At the March hearing, the committee was concerned with the style of the dormers, um, lack of half timbering to emphasize the style of the home, and potential privacy impacts on the east neighbor. Um, the applicant has um, changed the dormer style from gable to shed roof. Um, However, we are still seeing three dormers along the east elevation of the home. Um, staff is able to find the structure compatible with the neighborhood. We do have um, issue with the proposed roofing material in that on the plans, you're seeing that the roofing material, although is allowed in the city, um, the particular color is not on the city's pre-approved list. So staff is recommending that um, the home be installed with the country gray color, which is on the city's pre-approved list. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for committee, uh, for staff from the committee members? Maybe it's the architect, I have a question. So sure, uh, committee member like that. Do, do we decide, is the, there is two different color patterns. I, I, got, a, I got a palette on a, on the a report on a sheet of paper that had colors of Benjamin Moore and then on the plans they were different colors but they were similar. Yeah, the uh, I apologize. Was oh, sorry. Was I supposed to ask, wait for staff, or I mean, wait for the architect, or is that okay to ask staff? Am I asking the wrong person? Um, mm -hmm. we're, we will uh, ask questions directly to the applicant okay. once we have the applicant present. So, is there any comments or questions to uh, staff that can help you? Committee member Lake on? For, this, for the architect now? No, staff. Do you have no, any no, questions? No. Okay, regarding the staff report. No. Okay. Any other questions from committee members? 
Seeing none, we will uh, move on to the applicant. Is the applicant present? If you could please present uh, your case. Hi, good yeah. evening, everybody. Um, uh, this is Alice Chu. Uh, I'm the owner of the property at 615 La Mirada Avenue, which is the project uh, that uh, my architect, Mr. Tom Marble, uh, is taking place, helping me with it. So I'll have him explain the changes and the details uh, to you guys. This Thank evening. you, Mrs. Chu. Thank you. Tom. Hi, um, yeah, Tom Marble here. Um, well, we did, we listened to the comments. So what, let me address the, the colors. Uh, sorry about the, the, um, the labeling uh, on the drawings, but we, we are going with the palette that um, is on, on the board. And it's essentially the same as, as the colors um, across the street at 616 La Mirada. Um, which is a project I, I worked on about 10 years ago, I think. Um, and with regard to the dormers, yeah, we, we shrunk them down as, uh, to, to be the same sort of dimension as the existing one that faces uh, east. And, you know, we tried to make them as small as possible. The, uh, the bathroom, the master bathrooms, we really couldn't make it smaller than five by eight. Um, but the uh, but the dormer is the same proportion as the as the, uh, as the one in back and uh, and that's pretty much it. We're I think we're fine with the roofing material, mm -hmm. and and uh, that's you know that's it based on the staff report. Thank you. Is there any questions for the applicant from committee members? Seeing none, uh, we will move to. Public comments. Uh, are they, did you have you received any questions or comments, uh, Eva, from the public? No, not for this item. Thank you, Chair. If there's no members of the public who like to speak on this matter, we will close. Oh, uh, hi, hi. Danny. Uh, we're Danny and Didi. Um, we're at 631 La Mirada, so the the neighbor that's facing the east okay. from the home. Um, we just wanted to ask a question. I know during the last design review committee hearing, um, the committee members had a concern about there being um, too many dormers facing the east and that the house would look a little bit imbalanced. Uh, and we shared that same concern. And so I think the number of dormers will still stand at four total um, facing our house. And I just wanted to see if that was still a concern um, for the committee members. All right, thank you. We'll take that note and discuss it within the uh, committee member discussion period. Uh, thank you for your comments. Thanks. Any other members of the uh, public who'd like to speak on this matter? Seeing okay. none, we will close the public comment portion and move on to committee member discussions. Uh, committee member Wong? Member Wong, can you hear us, or you're on mute? I, he's on mute. I apologize. Okay. There you go. Thank you, Pete. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Great. Yeah, I appreciate the uh, work made by the owner and the architect, and um, especially adding the uh, obscure glass for the two of the three windows. And uh, obviously, that would help uh, bring uh, more uh, privacy protection to the neighbors. Um, I just wonder. Would it make the look of the uh, exterior of the three dormers a little bit inconsistent with being two obscure and one clear glass? So was that a comment or a statement, Peter? That's a... Uh, Is that question. a question or a comment? Question, question. question to the architect? Yeah, well, the, um, we really feel that uh, what's the, the, the experience inside the room is more important. Um, it would be strange to have in the master bedroom from the, the window across from the bed being obscure while the one facing the street is clear. So the windows are pretty small for a master bedroom. And so we really think it's important to have them be clear. And they're far enough away. I mean, they, they have no view over the, um, the courtyard or the master is it true that the one closer to the street is clear and the two inner ones are obscure? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if, 
if you would be, notice that so much from the street as, as you would from inside the bedroom. Because I think it's better to have the, the windows in the bedroom be the same um, level of opacity, if that makes sense. Uh, my concern is really the visibility from the street. I think when you are kind of inside the room, the dormer is kind of a little farther away from the hot spots in the room in, 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 in general. So the view is really more like bringing in light. Sure, so but what it's happens is the issue. Since this faces east, um, it, it's an obscure window which would hold the light. So it would be like a blast of light in the morning as opposed to just sunlight, you know, hitting the ground. It would actually, I mean, it would, I think it would, it would make it not, not such a nice master bedroom because the, the windows are so small. If that makes sense. Committee member Wong, if we can, if you can keep the comments to the discussions okay, with the committee members, um, if you have a concern, you can raise it and we can note it if we want, went during the uh, approval or continuance phase. If you have a specific question that you need answer in order to make your decision or comment, then do so now, but we're not gonna resolve anything at this moment. Uh, with the, it. With it's the just a concern, thank you. Okay. No more comments. Okay. No more comments, thank you. Uh, committee member Chow. Uh, I tend to agree with uh, the steps finding and recommendation um, with regards of the windows, uh, window treatment and the dormers uh, on the east side um, to address the um, the comment from uh, the neighbor, three versus uh, two dormers. Uh, I think the, the three dormers, uh, to me, they, they are still in proportion. They look uh, fine and uh, the, the new design, everything I think uh, is compatible. Um, so I would just only address the, 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 the seated window, the obscure window. Uh, based on, I agree with the, the, the staff's uh, recommendation. Thank you very much. Uh, Vice Chair Banish. Yeah, you know, uh, as everybody else, everybody else has honed in on the dormers, and that's also my concern here. Um, you know, I think the other things were adequately addressed that we brought up. Um, you know, we've, we've had the um, next door neighbors come and very, very politely suggest that their privacy is impacted by not only the presence of any dormers, but by the number of dormers. And I, I get the sense that they're, um, that they're very concerned about that. They've come to us last time and said this, they're coming to us this time and saying, hey, the committee mentioned this last time and this has not been reduced. I feel that that's a valid concern. And I, I believe that I, um, you know, I was really looking for how can we give the applicant what they want, which we know that they want the extra square footage and how can we also serve the neighbor a little bit better in terms of their privacy. So I noticed that, you know, in terms of really what looks architecturally the awkward, is the dormer that is close to the front of the house for the bedroom. And I say that because it's the one that is most uh, visible from the facade, from the front of the house, but it's most visible kind of as you're driving by. So given the fact that that room already has windows in it. And sorry, sorry. Sure. Able... Eva, can you mute uh, Mr. Erickson's line? Thank you so much, Eva. Okay. So what I was saying was like, I really, what I really noticed is that the front dormer is the most prominent and the most, let's say, problematic because it's the most visible from the facade and it's the most visible from the street. It's the, it's the one that really, I think is the, the easiest to, the, the, has the most impact on the neighbors. And I also noted that that front room already has a window so it's not like we're making this a black hole for the applicant. We're saying you still have a window in that room. You still have the square footage. You're just we're just making the prominence of this door, of this um, of this one dormer. I think it should be eliminated. Um, 
and uh, I believe that it is nice that they have reduced the scale of the dormers, but they were really, really over oversized at the beginning. So now they're just a little bit more realistic. Um, so um, I could approve this project this evening if the applicant would agree to one, remove the roof dormer that is closest to the street and to reduce the middle dormer from nine feet wide to six feet wide. And um, I think personally that that would address some of the privacy issues and architectural style issues, which are really compatibility issues. And I believe that that would give the applicant mostly what they want. I don't think that a, a master bathroom really requires a giant window. I mean, I heard the architect say, we just couldn't go lower on that, but you really, in my opinion, you can't. It's a bathroom. So I hope that this will give everybody a little bit what they want, and this is what I will be proposing, unless I hear that the applicant is absolutely dead set against this and wants to come back with something else. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair. Uh, committee member Um uh, I agree with a lot of what has been said and the staff report. I have um, some different comments regarding the dormers and the privacy. Uh, and also incorporated with the architecture the, being compatible with itself. I, I felt that the, uh, the three dormers, I like the shed uh, version better than the last time. Uh, the middle dormer, the wide one, I agree with uh, committee member uh, Baton Rouge, uh, about reducing it from nine feet to six feet. I think that um, if we reduce those outer two windows and make it more in line with the other two dormers, uh, it would it would also be more compatible with the with the bottom uh, the first floor of the of of the outside the exterior of the house. Um, currently, it's three wide the, the wide window, and then there's that little bathroom window underneath, and I think it's out of balance and it's not consistent with itself. So. Um, I think that would give um, some privacy and um, take away some of that feeling that they feel like they're being looked over on um, and also look nicer from the outside. Um, I also uh, think that the, uh, the front window, I, I actually don't mind the front dormer. I think that's the, the one that doesn't look into the backyard at all. So I felt like the front window, the front dormer is the one that if you're not going to do anything opaque, that would be the one. And I agree with the, you know, the sun rises on the east. I think it's going to be a strange bedroom not to have a window. Um, to have that obscured, it's not going to feel right. But the, the, the two back dormers um, that you're adding, I would have to condition that they were done in seated or um, reeded glass. Um, and I have another question that about the dormers, but my other question is, uh, or concern is the window number 15, I believe it's the uh, west facing the other neighbors on the first floor to the right of the front door. I'm looking for the architect. <laughs> There's a small window in a bathroom. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, that's an existing window. Sorry. I'm sorry, my, I'm asking, I can't hear it because of all the noise. There's a, there's a small bathroom window that um, has just a single light and it's close to the front door. My, I would like to condition the project that that window is done in a, a leaded diamond shape pattern, some kind of decorative light, uh, um, a decorative type uh, window that is uh, historically uh, accurate for this type of house, similar to the window we see across the street um, facing the front um, it's about the same size and it has the leaded glass um, and the diamond pattern. I think something like that would look nicer um, as you're approaching the front door uh, than just a small, just a bathroom, plain bathroom window. So close to the entry of the house. Um, my other uh, uh, condition, I, if the other committee members feel this is important or not, is uh, the front door proposed is an aluminum clad and uh, for English tutors and in that neighborhood and this kind of uh, era of this whole neighborhood, I think that um, a solid wood with uh, wood stained and not the aluminum clad would be more appropriate for this house. Um, and I also noticed that you put some brick detail on the porch, which I think is really nice and I could approve that. 
I like the change of the front. I think that the half timbering is, is really nice and I think it's a huge improvement overall. And with those other conditions, I um, could support the project. Thank you very much, Committee Member Lycon uh, and Committee Member Chow. Um, I think I already commented on that. I'm sorry, Committee Member Wong. Even if you I no further there. comment. I said it. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Committee Member Wong. Oh, sorry. Committee Member Wong, did you already speak on this one? Um, For long I have concern on the... Uh, Go ahead, we hear you. Yeah, I, I had concern on the obscure window and the clear window, but the colleague uh, made a point, and I understand that. Uh, with regard to uh, requesting a leaded window in the front, um, I don't think it is really important for me. So that's my comment. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, overall, I feel like the project is a well uh, composed project. I think with some of the comments uh, made from various committee members, um, I, specific to the windows and sizing and, and potentially um, uh, uh, fritted or frost, uh, frosting of the glass uh, for privacy reasons, I think uh, I'd be able to support the project. Uh, is there a motion uh, with condition for approval? I just want a question, Kevin. I didn't really understand what your comments were about the dormers. My, my comments are if the window, specific to the reduction of the size from the nine feet to six feet, I would be in support of it. Uh, as well as if the privacy of the windows that do face um, our frosted or fritted glass uh, in order to maintain privacy, I would be uh, amenable to it. If it's a consensus of the, the committee that they be removed entirely, um, I would be in support of it as well. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll make a motion and see where it goes. Sure. Um, I, I am noting that I'm the only one who mentioned the idea of removing one of the dormers. And I guess before I make a motion, uh, you know, I'm really, trying to keep the neighbor's privacy in mind here by suggesting this. And I don't know whether we just continue this and then address the neighbors of the, address the neighbor's privacy concerns or whether, whether we make a motion, which I would prefer, which would remove one of the dormers now. But if I have no support for such a motion, I don't want to waste our time here. So yeah, would any of the other committee members uh, support the removal of one of those dormers? The removal of one or a reduction of that one? The removal of one and the reduction of the bathroom one. And which one did you want to take out? The bedroom? The, the front? front one because it already has adequate, adequate lighting from the front. So we're not taking away uh, a room by re removing a dormer. We're just removing some light. You know, I, I really feel that we are not addressing, you know, by, by making a dormer a little bit smaller, we're really not addressing the privacy concerns of the neighbors. So I think either we throw this back to, um, to the applicant to really address that better, or we address it through our motion that's my suggestion can i or no okay committee member chow did you have a comment to make uh, yes in responding to um joy's comment i think we are addressing the privacy is issue neighbors concern if we make all the glasses obscure okay uh, the first one, the, the clear one. Right. Um, so also we are reducing the size, but I think by making the glass obscure, that, that's, I think, a huge privacy improvement. Is there a consensus among the other committee members of that, that dis regarding this discussion? 
I'm not, uh, um, when you say obscure, do you mean just that kind of foggy look or do you mean a, a reeded or um, the seated look? I'm, I'm hearing different things. I have, I know it's obscure when it has that kind of coating on it that you, it looks like you can't see it. Are we talking that or are we talking about a specific? Well, I think the treatment proposed for the, for the middle dormer is um, like uh, seated, I believe. So looking out, I would say uh, it'll just be a kind of a simple, distorted look, I guess. Okay. And I want to also add that, that, you know, once the dormer is there, the dormer is there, like, you know, a few years from now, someone changes the glass and everybody's forgotten about this. And I see the applicant nodding, his, nodding their heads, uh, you know, Privacy is privacy, and if you've got three dormers, you know, that's, you're sort of opening, opening things up here. I, I don't know also that uh, frosted glass is really appropriate in, in all of these rooms. Certainly it is in the bathroom, I agree, like no, nobody wants that, but, but, you know, in terms of the other rooms, that's almost like a substandard window. So what's the point of the window at that point? You know, I'd rather just say, we're not going to have substandard windows in San Marino. Let's just give the applicant a little more privacy. Let's, let's either throw this back to the applicant for a more workable solution and perhaps, so I guess uh, the question, perhaps they can work with the neighbors. So I guess the question is, with the removal of a dormer, have you, have you, chosen and selected which dormer you propose to be removed or are you leaving up to applicant? If you're leaving up to applicant, then I would say potentially we would still need to have this come before us for continuance. If you think that you've decided which one would provide the adequate privacy to the neighbors, then you can include that in your motion and see how it goes. You know, I'll just throw out a motion with the idea that, you know, we also could vote my motion down and, and throw this back to the applicant. So, I just feel very strongly that the neighbors need to be part of the solution because they're affected by this. And I wish that they had been part of the solution already. I don't know what that's about, but I think um, I will just make a motion that can be voted down. So my motion is that we move to approve uh, 615 La Mirada DRC case 18-59 on the condition that the uh, dormer that is closest to the front be removed, that the middle dormer be reduced to six feet and be obscured glass or seated or reeded glass. Any of those are fine as far as I'm concerned. And that the dormer in the back can remain as is on the plans. And um, that would be my, my um, that's, that's, that's my motion. All right, do we have a second to Vice Chair's Badnage motion? Committee Member Wong, you second. Roll call, please. Thank you, Chair. Come, alternate Committee Member Rick Chow. Uh, yes. Thank you. Committee Member Wong. Committee. Committee Member Wong? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Committee Member Lacon? Uh, no. Vice Chair Batnich? Yes. Thank you. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we'll now move on to our next agenda item for the evening. Agenda item number three, DRC case 19-85. Staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. This item is located at 1455 Bellwood Road. The applicant is requesting to provide a one-story addition to an existing single-story residence. Um, the project will also involve filling in the existing swimming pool in the backyard, um, removing the existing two-car garage, and building a new two-car garage in the northwest corner of the property. Um, the only um, aspect of the project subject to a DRC approval is the single story addition. Um, staff has noted um, tree preservation recommendation from the arborist and that is recommended for approval. In addition to that, staff would also like to add that um, 
the project we provided an observation report at the conclusion of the project to ensure that tree number three, four, and five in the arborist report uh, remain in good health throughout the project and afterward. Um, staff is able to support the project, um, finding that it is compatible with the neighborhood and with itself with the condition of approval on the previous uh, mentioned tree preservation items and um, providing consistent roofing material in tree doors and addition of single hung windows on both the north and the south elevation. Staff would like to add that the applicant um, has worked with his architect, James Cohen, who, whom is also on this um, Zoom meeting call today, that they have already um, provided elevation changes to provide additional windows that staff has recommended. Um, if um, the commission is um, confident in staff's um, ability to review the new location of these windows, um, the committee can certainly um, follow staff's recommendation and um, move the project forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for staff from committee members? Seeing none, uh, the applicant is that, sorry, Peter, uh, Committee Member Wong, do you have a question? Uh, Eva, if you can unmute him, please. Yeah, I just want to ask the staff that in the uh, cover page that the uh, total ground cover is more than the maximum. So is there any calculation errors? Yes, so, so the, the architect's, architect's office has provided a new number for the total grant coverage, and it has been confirmed that the total proposed grant coverage at the conclusion of this project will be below the 3,000 square feet maximum allowed. That um, the number shown on the plans that you are seeing is an error. Do we have clarification what the new number is? It's um, three square feet below 3,000. Three square feet below. Remember, well, any, thank, that's enough. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Seeing none, uh, applicant, please present. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Michael Wu. This is my wife, Billy, and our daughter, Kelly. Um, so, uh, we're, we have James helping us out with uh, the drawings. Um, just want to say thank you guys uh, for, for uh, help, um, having these hearings uh, going forth you know, during these uh, struggling times. Um, we're both healthcare workers um, in, in hospitals, and so we definitely understand the, uh, the struggles and challenges they're going through currently. So we appreciate the city, uh, the commission uh, members, and also the uh, community uh, for allowing us to keep up occurring. So uh, we look forward to uh, the community soon. So um, uh, I'll let uh, James uh, take over. Okay. Yeah, hi. Uh, it's fairly simple when we. Uh, when we started the project, we really uh, decided so we didn't change the front at all. We changed one window basically. And we maintained all the setbacks, maintained the heights, and designed the roof in such a way that the back addition didn't uh, get higher than the front of the house. And otherwise, we pretty much uh, matched everything. We're changing all the windows, but we're, if you compare the old and new front elevation, we're using the same grid patterns and everything. And uh, we're using the same wood on the gables, and we're taking off the wood shake and doing all new cedar light, and uh, basically tried to make it as um, non noticeable as possible. Uh, I have a question uh, for for the architect. The portion that has the flat roof, uh, what uh -huh. what area in the floor plan would that be about? Oh, let's see. That would be is that the family room or right between let's the family see room? here. It would be yeah. It would be a little bit over. Let's say the family room, a little bit of the kitchen, a little bit of a hallway, probably a little bit overall three of them, kind of. Is the ceiling heights in those areas going to remain at the A two plate, or are you going up or? No, no, it's the same. We it's the same. We use the flat roof to keep the roof low, and also it's a good place to hide solar panels. Okay. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions for the applicant from committee members? Yes, I have one. Uh, committee member Lake. Is the front door remaining or are you replacing the front door? Um, originally, we were just gonna keep the front door, but uh, Ava wanted us to replace it with a new door to match the existing. So we're gonna do a new door just to match the existing. To match the existing? I'm missing, I'm not hearing you. Excuse me? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Yeah, a new door, a new door to match the existing. Okay, 
Thank you. Sure. Any other questions for uh, committee member Wong? Uh, Eva, I think we have to mute committee member Wong. Thank you. Okay. It's okay. Right. So I just want to check with the architect or the owner that uh, the entire roof would be consistent. That in the original submittal, we say which shake roof remains, whereas the new one will be cedar light. Uh, can you confirm that? What is it going to be now? Yes, it's all cedar light. And in the uh, plans that we printed up for you guys and also emailed to Eva, we took off the existing roof to remain and have it all as the, as the cedar light. All new roof. All new roof, yeah. Thank you. Roof, yeah, all new roof material. <laughs> new material, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions for the advocate? I have one more. I, th really I think there was a, um, a conflict with one of the papers they just said that um, there would, the pool's gonna be filled in, I take it in the backyard. Um, the pool's gonna be filled in, and then one said there's gonna be lawn, and one, some site plan said uh, maybe concrete. I'm not sure what it did indicate. Um, not, on, not on what I'm looking at. It's gonna be lawn. Gonna be lawn. Gonna be lawn with no pool? No pool. And the reason we redid the garage was because the existing garage isn't big enough. It's not really a two-car garage. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Could Committee Member Wong. Eva. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, owner or the architect, owner or the architect. So, in other words, you're going to backfill the pool so that yes. uh, the current pool area would be lawn. Yes, the area we fill in will be lawn. Yes. Okay. Got it. Any further questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Well, now I'm open to public comment. If there's any members of the public who'd like to speak for or against about this project. Uh, Eva, did you receive anything regarding this project? None, thank you for thank asking. You. Any, <coughs> any members of the public? Seeing none, we'll close public comment portion and move to committee member discussions. Uh, committee member uh, Lacon. Um, is somebody saying something down here? We're is someone writing something or no? Uh, I don't believe so. Okay, I saw something flip, say, something about they can see something from their house. Okay. Um, yeah, there is, someone is actually asking a question. I don't know if that's considered a public comment, but if you could have Zoom group chat, someone's asking something. Uh, do you know which, which um, participant Hello. that is? Hello. Uh, it says, um, from someone whose last name is Shen, are we able to see the building plan? Is the question. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, uh, Guo Ping Shen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Can, we, can we see the building plan of the house? Uh, the plans are available for viewing. Are they, or, or is there an electronic copy to be shared with the public, uh, Eva? Uh, not at this time. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, you, for the speaker, uh, Mr. Shen, could you please state your full name and address? Okay. Mr. Guoping Shen, can you please state your whole name and address, please? Yes, my name is Guoping Shen, and my address is 1465 Bellwood. Oh. 1465 Bellwood. So you're, you're the immediate neighbor, or uh, a, 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 uh, you're a neighbor to the yeah. North? yeah, yeah, yeah. Di direct neighbor to the to, to our neighbor. Uh, uh, so I guess a question to the applicant: Was there any effort made to contact that um, neighbor with some form of plans for their review? Uh, I I know the homeowner did the signatures on this one, so I I don't know which address he is, but uh, I I know we as a group tried everyone, so. <clears throat> I don't know which one you're. You know, there's, there are all of the most impacted neighbors are no response. That makes me worry. And we've got someone on the phone who's asking, do we, can we see plans? So, um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Let's, so to the applicant, it sounds like the, the applicant, uh, Mr. Wu, homeowner, can you unmute uh, Mr. Wu, please, Eva? Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> uh, 
Mr. Wu, can you please comment on how you made contact with your most immediate affected neighbors that have not, no responses? And it appears that one of your neighbors is present and asking about seeing the plans. So can you speak to that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we, we try to visit all of them and you know, knock on their doors or, you know, introduce ourselves. But, um, you know, I think it was you know, during a pretty tough time for oh. people to be going around door to door. So yeah. you know, we, we tried our best and, um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, were copies of plans left at the homeowner's residence, the, the neighbor's residence? Sorry. Uh, no, no, we didn't feel you know leaving stuff would be appropriate. I'm not really sure if that's um, something that is uh, commonly done. Um, but I believe the the floor plans um, were on the agenda, if if I'm not mistaken, uh, posted online. Not not the floor plan per se, but uh, if you pull up the agenda online. Um, you can see the, uh, the uh, I guess, before and after, I guess. Okay. Uh, Chair Chang? Vice Chair Manage. I just want to make a comment. You know, I don't know why this didn't occur to me until right now, because we've been dealing with neighbor comments uh, in previous items. But, you know, it's because, because uh, the applicant just mentioned it's, it was an awkward time to be going around to neighbors and knocking on doors. That's a really valid point. And uh, even leaving materials is difficult, even being able to look at materials with it, even being able to go to City Hall and looking at those materials, there's a lot of obstacles to that. And I'm wondering, since we have such a very large number of non-responsive uh, neighbors, if we shouldn't be giving them a chance to review them, because there's some very serious obstacles that are in their way of actually being able to to see how this impacts their property. I'm not sure what the solution is, but I'm wondering if there are any suggestions, perhaps. So let's, let's speak to staff regarding that. Mm -hmm. uh, Eva, was this taken into consideration or was this a, an issue that was raised on previous, um, I believe there was a planning commission meeting that was held same, similar during this COVID time. Uh, was there any efforts or, or issues with regards to contact neighbors? and the lack thereof participation or an inability to have them participate in providing any type of formal response? Um, Chair, um, the letters that came back from the neighbors in file indicate that the, either the property owner or the architect's office went to talk to the neighbors um, in, in the middle and near the end of December 2019. Um, I, I don't believe during that time um, that the community was um, affected by COVID. the COVID-19 um, virus. Um, in terms of contacting neighbor for other projects that are going on now, staff has advised property owners and applicants to actually send out certified mails to the neighbors um, in place of going door to door or try to have person-to-person um, -person, um, interaction with the neighbors. Right, so uh, Mr. Wu, yeah, can you unmute Mr. Wu and see if that was done with the certified mails? Yeah, so I mean, we, we, we definitely attempt to, you know, reach out to our neighbors. Um, just like our current home here in South Pasadena, we, you know, said hello to all the neighbors uh, before we moved in here. So, um, you know, if we don't submit anything, that's, I guess, a little separate, but, you know, we have attempted to, to do such. To be a friendly neighbor. No, we, I understand, but specific to your request for renovation and the notification to neighbors, neighbors of that effort, that's what we're speaking about, not when you purchase the home or when you, it's specific to the plans and the design and how it may impact your neighbors. It's during the COVID portion of the, of the duration of, of time in this uh, year, um, was the effort made to certify the mail or a copy of the plans to the neighbors. That's, that's what we're, we're requesting. No, no, I have not certified mail, uh, but that's something that, that is completely, uh, you know, we can definitely do. We understand. I mean, it, 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 it arises, the issue arises because there is a neighbor that is a direct immediate neighbor who is having questions about what's being done. So, uh, uh, maybe we could uh, mute whoever is making noise. <laughs> 
don't know who that is. Yeah, it was uh, Mr. Okazaki. Can you please mute Mr. Okazaki? Thank you. Thank you. You know, so I understand that this had nothing to do with, um, you know, COVID-19 because this was in December, but um, I don't know. It, this is a, we have someone, we have both, two out of three, sorry, three out of four people who live behind this project have no response. Uh, neighbors on either side, the next door neighbors have no response. The, Two, the two, two out of the three most impacted neighbors across the street have no response. I don't know. It it seems like I don't know. I might make a suggestion that we that we let's not let's not just I mean, we can't we can can't we shouldn't just insinuate. I mean, we can state facts is what we have before us. So if yes. if that affects your ability to review and approve or or make a decision this evening, then then we can make that during the committee member discussion. Yeah, the, the, I'm saying the facts on terms of how many people have no response. So that in addition to the fact that we have a phone caller, that we have someone who is a neighbor, we have a neighbor caller, present, correct. asking where can I get plans? And I, I don't know, it's, uh, I'm wondering if perhaps we could review this, um, review this anyway, but give the neighbors one more chance to review this material. I don't know. Okay, all right, uh, any other? community member discussions uh, before we move on to our committee member discussions. Seeing none, we'll close the, the public comment portion of the hearing and move on to uh, committee member discussions. Uh, Vice Chair Babbage, do you want to continue on with your thoughts and then we'll move on to other committee member discussion uh, comments? Yeah, my, I, w I guess I would say uh, that we should, since we're all here, discuss this project, but still give the neighbors uh, just uh, continue it in the interest of um, making sure that the neighbors have an appropriate um, uh, access to uh, information because it seems like maybe because they don't live here, they have not been able to really knock on those doors as much as they should have in order to make contact. So as far as the project is concerned, do you want my comments on the project now? Of course. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think that generally this is an okay project. I think that the compatibility is there. I'm, I don't really understand why there's like a little courtyard kind of thing. I don't know if it's called a courtyard, but, um, you know, overall I don't, I think it fits and I think it is compatible. Um, I, I just am concerned about the neighbors not having access to this who are most uh, direct, uh, directly affected. And I, would like to also hear about what the other um, committee members say about this project because generally I think it's okay, but um, you know I could have missed things. Thank you. Thank you. You never like on. Yes, I, I thought this um, this project architecturally um, fits in with the neighborhood. I find it um, compatible with itself. I agree with staff about the windows added to the back. I was especially concerned about the right side. I thought they needed. Uh, a window. Uh, the garage is not part of this um, process or this uh, review. Um, it's being moved back so much that I'm still concerned about um, area to turn around. Um, for a house that's going to be this size with such a narrow driveway, it's going to be very tight. And I started picturing the whole backyard in concrete um, because practically practical reasons and the fact that there's no side door, so the person who's bringing home groceries is going to be pulling in all the way, and if there's cars, this is going to be a lot of inconvenience. So I thought that could be kind of a mess, but that's not um, really part of the review. Uh, uh, I think I think the project is okay. Um, I'm very uncomfortable with the neighbor who's trying to call in, and and that makes me um, want to pause a little bit, and I would consider supporting a continuance just based on. Um, the neighbors being sent uh, the project uh, through certified mail. Uh, the plan itself, I'm okay with. Thank you, Committee Member Lacon. Uh, Committee Member Chow. Yes, and uh, I pretty much um, echo all the comments uh, so far. Uh, it's uh, the project is okay. The, the ground coverage, as um, um, Committee Member Wong kind of pointed out, uh, it's really at its maximum. Um, I'm, I'm never a, a huge fan of that, but um, 
having said that, I think the, the, the project is okay, uh, but we do like to hear if there are any concerns from the neighbors. Okay. And finally, Committee Member Wong. Yeah, I can see the um, architect and yeah. the owner team has done a fair amount of decent job to look at the codes and make sure it is really within the codes. Uh, the, the center flat roof, so to speak, is definitely bringing the roof height down so that it is not visible from the street for the addition uh, as a result. But I was just cautious the owner that the uh, two degree slope is good than nothing, better than nothing, but there will be obviously impact when there's a rainy day, so the waterproof and the water you know, runoff should be well taken care of. Otherwise you have a fair amount of uh, long-term maintenance issue thereafter. I share the same concern from my colleagues that um, the, some of the neighbors may not have a chance to go through the plan in detail. And uh, that is my reservation. Thank you very much, Committee Member Wong. Um, I share the same sentiment. I think, it's an, I think it is an approvable project. I think the uh, addition um, is, is com it compatible with itself and it's also compatible with the neighborhood. I, I do have some concerns that it, it, it is right up to the allowable square footage. Um, we have seen homes specifically in this neighborhood uh, increasing in size. So that's kind of some reservations I have. Um, but as far as the, the design and, and what has been accomplished, <laughs> um, you know, to, the, to the comments made uh, regarding the, the approval or objection or no responses, um, I, I see the concern of other committee members that all the immediate project uh, properties have no response. Um, however, on the flip side, uh, there are six approvals. That uh, Eva, can we confirm you have those approval letters for the six? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, and they're signed and verified. I mean, that's why this was. Yes. So, so to that point, I mean, it's it could be strategic. I mean, there's a lot. Of, you can make a lot of speculations of how that was uh, arrived to. Uh, we did hear from the homers that there was no effort made uh, Im immediately right now about. Uh, getting certified mail or having plans made available to the let's call it the most affected neighbors um, that is of concern as well to me so uh, i wouldn't say that there was any malicious intent as to not um, trying to given the opportunity however uh, given that there was six approvals however it is it is questionable given you know the, the most the most affected neighbors uh were not did have no response. So we don't know whether they received it and threw it away. They received it and they tried to respond, but given the circumstances, they didn't. So uh, with that and having a vocal neighbor today asking about what's being done, I think uh, it would be prudent to continue and, and have the uh, neighborhood have the opportunity to see uh, whether it's by email of electronic version of the plans uh, where there's no contact or certified mail, it's however means um, staff could recommend to the applicant, I would be in support of a continuance this evening. Do we have a motion? Uh, or go ahead. Uh, well, first, staff, staff, when would the next available meeting be? That will be June 24th. June 24th, at which time does it be due when? Kevin, I'm so sorry. It will be June 17th. June 17th. Okay. Yes. Uh, is that amenable to the? Is there any action date required? Or we have? It says the required action date for this project is in two days. Is that correct? So they would have to waive the, the uh, act. Yes, that's correct. Um, this project was um, deemed complete back in. March and because the committee hasn't had any um, meetings since then, um, that is the reason why we are very close to the action date. So if the homeowner and um, the architect is amenable to extending or waiving the permit streamlining act, that will allow the committee to continue their action and um, bring the project back on June 17th and render a decision at that meeting. Okay. Uh, so to the homeowner, Mr. Wu, are you amenable to continuance to the date of uh, June 17th? Uh, yes. 
and that would give adequate time to make some form of contact with your neighbors and, and have your architect provide plans. Yeah, so I guess, um, what are the, I guess I just needed to ask, what are the, the certified mail or just want to certify what is the? It sounded like it was certified mail, but I would ask that you contact uh, staff, Troy, uh, to, to, clear, to confirm what would be the most suitable method. Yeah, because, you know, definitely now I don't think people want to be going to their door. Policy, so. <laughs> policy, procedures and policy. Uh, we, we appreciate your, your uh, willingness to work with your neighbors. Uh, do, we, do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. I make a motion. I move to continue uh, agenda item DRC 19-85 to the June 17th date. Do we have a second? Committee member Lacon with a second. Roll call, please. Also, the committee member Rick Chow. Yes. Thank you. Committee member Wong. Committee no. member Wong? Yes. Thank you. Committee member Lacon? Yes. Thank you. Vice Chair Matnich? Yes. Thank you. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We'll move on to agenda item number four, design review case number DRC 19 92, 280 Carleris Road. Uh, staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, this item is a first and second story addition to an existing two-story residence. Um, the current existing garage will remain at its um, current location. Staff is able to make the compatibility finding for the home with the expansion. Um, however, um, we, we would also like to know that um, all the architectural features and exterior material are duplicated throughout the new areas to, produ to produce a cohesive project. Um, staff does not have any concern about this addition project. We would like to know that um, the story pole for this project was installed back in March. However, the applicant has to remove those story pole and the, um, if the if the committee wishes to see a video of those polls to show you the massing and the silhouette of the addition um, that is available from the architect's office. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions for staff from committee members? Seeing none, uh, committee member one. Wait, right, staff? For staff, for staff. Yes, staff, staff. question. Uh, yes. For the addition of the new study, uh, it comes fairly close to the 48-inch camphor tree, or the big camphor tree in the front. So is there any obvious report or similar document to at least ensure that during construction, the tree would not be impacted? It's a really big and old tree. Um, an obvious report was not requested from the applicant during the review process. However, um, the committee, if you feel that there is need for that um, can certainly condition the approval to provide an obvious report prior to the project and require tree protection during the construction process. Staff, do, you, do we have measurement as to the distance between the proposed added wing to the uh, tree? Is it within the drip line of the tree? If not, how far away? I, I would defer that question to the architect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for staff and committee members? Seeing none, uh, the applicant, if you could please state your name and address. Yes, hi. Um, thanks everybody for being so flexible and uh, open to and dealing with the technology. It's very appreciated, we understand. Um, so thank you members of the committee and planning staff and Eva for, for the thorough review. So I'm Susan Masterman. I'm the architect for Heather and Victor Fan, who are here tonight. Um, and I know you've all had time to review the drawings and to drive by the house. And I'm, I'm really here to answer any questions. On the first floor, the project includes a small expansion uh, towards the east property line in front of that camper tree. And I, I have uh, some drawings up so I can do a screen share and we can look, review the site plan together if that is helpful. And in the back, we have a new family room and the guest room addition. On the second floor, we're expanding towards, we'll call it the north, the project north, uh, of a new third bedroom and uh, creating a master bath. So the materials are all 
compatible, that we're matching existing wherever possible. We'll have, so that's the wood siding, the wood shingle roofing, the custom wood windows, the E details, the rake details, the, the gate um, attic vents. So I hope you will agree that this project meets all of the, the conditions of approval, that the project and the new additions are compatible with the neighborhood, respectful to the immediate neighbors, compatible with the existing house and scale and massing, and the materials are consistent and match the existing house. So now with, with your permission, I'll, shall I do a screen share? Yes, sure. Okay. Yes. We tested this out right before the hearing, so fingers crossed. Okay, here we go. So, whoop, whoop, whoop. I think the difficulties already. My mouse just. So here, if you can see, I'm going to reorient my desks, my desktops a little bit. And I apologize. I'm looking at my other monitor that has the drawings. And I'm going to use the. I'm going to annotate. So the existing camphor tree. Is right. right here red. Can everybody see that okay? Yes. 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 And um, the new work is, is drawn up here, but I see that we have mm. we have left off the camphor tree on the new the new drawing. But if we go down here to the existing site plan, this is where the new work is added. And I I go to my drafting program and I grab my uh, dimension tool, we are, say, just about 15 feet to the trunk. Now, a camphor tree does have a big root base, um, and the canopy is estimated. So, yes, we are, we are underneath that tree, but I think um, that this, it is respectful to, to to the tree and will not have any impact. We can also have a condition of approval that any foundation work is hand dug and so that any major roots are avoided and we can do special foundation detail to avoid major roots if they do indeed stay on the surface. All right, um, is that, that, does that conclude your presentation? Um, unless if there's any specific questions, and I can also pull up, um, I have a bunch of drawings open right now, but just to re refresh your memory, if it's been a while since you've driven by, but this is, this is the front of the house, the front door, the, the one um, dormer, and the materials that we are uh, uh, continuing. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions for the applicant from committee members? Committee member Bandage, uh, Vice Chair Bandage. Uh, yeah, I just, it's more like a confirmation. Um, the space between the back addition and mm -hmm. the garage, is that 10 feet, 11 feet? Uh, what do you have you that? Right now, there we go. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm going to, it is, it is, And then we are 11, 11, feet, 11 and a half feet away. Okay. 11, Is that 11? 11, 11.6. Okay. My, my 11, four and a half. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, committee member Chow. Um, yes, uh, question for the architect. I also had the same kind of. Uh, a question similar. Uh, the distance, uh, which I already verified uh, today with the staff uh, at, at about 11 feet. Uh, my question to you is, have you guys considered, is it a, a feasible to move the garage uh, toward the west um, property line? Um, no, we, we never, we never considered that. That would be a a major change in scope of work. Okay. Um, and then the follow up question is that the wall between the garage or dividing the garage and the house, is that still going to be there? 
No, we are going to have to. Okay. The, the, the plan you just sh you showed just now, the first mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. it seems to indicate that the wall is still there. Is that green? That, yeah, that green. Sorry, let me get back to my mouse. I think this is a drafting error. It is uh, on a, it is on a. Um, That's okay, because the, the plan we received, that wall is not there. So I was, I just want to clarify. No further question. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, we'll now move to public comment. If there's any members of the public who would like to speak or against about this project. Uh, okay. Should I undo the screen sharing? Please, thank you so much. Uh, Eva, any comments emailed to you or messages regarding this applicant application? No. Thank you. Uh, is there any members of the public who would like to speak about this project? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion and move to committee member discussions. Committee member Wong. Right. Uh, I've seen the site and um, I really can speak that uh, the camper tree does have a little distance from the addition, but giving that particular access to the new addition side, which construction material probably would have to go close by the camper tree, it would be advisable to at least have a protection measure so that uh, the, the fence could be around the at least five feet uh, ring of the tree so that the tree would not be hampered during the construction period. and. Um, from a competitiveness point of view, I appreciate the work done by the architectural team that even though the addition of the new um, room is visible from the street, it is very consistent with the look of the existing architecture and with the neighborhood. So I, uh, I appreciate that. And as a whole, everything is uh, within code in my uh, opinion. So I see the case uh, approvable. Thank you. Community Member Chow. Um, well, I think the architect uh, did a good job. Um, I think the, I like the plan, um, it addressed many um, um, areas, uh, nicely designed. My reservation is about the, the backyard uh, between the new extension and the, and the garage, uh, the distance. Uh, I just feel that the, the backyard, the, the lot, itself as is, is already pretty cluttered, um, just given the layout, it's, it's narrow and uh, doesn't seem to have a, a, a lot of room to expand uh, toward the back. So I, I would like to hear um, my colleagues um, thought uh, on that. Thank you. All right, so Vice Chair Bandage. Uh, yes, I actually uh, share um, share that opinion. Uh, I'm going to skip over privacy and materials issues because I think that they are largely okay. Um, I can make the findings for that. Um, as far as, um, although I am a little worried about the next door neighbor being non-responsive because that's the neighbor that's most impacted, but clearly there was a good, you know, there was a, there were a lot of other positive responses, but I don't see any major privacy impacts anyway. Um, as far as um, compatibility goes, the way I view this is there's two main additions that we're looking at today. Um, the addition for the rear family room and the fairly small study room addition in the front. Um, in terms of the rear addition, um, I think most of it integrates well with one notable exception, which was already mentioned, which is that the distance between the garage and the family room is extremely small. Um, 11 feet. This makes the space awkward in the yard and makes it um, probably difficult to safely exit the garage as well in terms of turning radius. Um, so I believe that this project would be helped quite a bit by just uh, pulling back that part of the living room addition a bit and that would um, help uh, the addition feel better. Um, uh, in terms of the front addition, I personally believe that <clears throat> the 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 study room in the front that juts out into the north side yard um, <clears throat> i don't believe that that part of the facade is compatible uh, with the overall massing of the house when you you know this is a a real narrow block house and when you add that study room in the front that's kind of jutting out it just 
to me, it ruins the facade. I know that there's a tree there that's at the moment, you know, kind of filtering that out a little bit. Um, but it just, it just doesn't make sense to me. There's this little thing jutting out and then it juts back in. And then, you know, I don't mind that it juts out in the, towards the back. There's another ridge line in the back because that's very, very far recessed from, from the facade. But the facade has really changed in a very awkward way in the front. So I personally don't think that that study room, um, you know, is compatible. Um, so the bottom line for me is that if the study room is eliminated and the addition in the back near the garage is pulled back a little, I would be able to support this project. And I definitely see the applicant being able to do this in one, um, you know, by the next meeting. So I would support continuing this um, to the next meeting with the idea that we should be able to approve it at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, committee member Lake, uh, and finally committee member Lake. Uh, well, actually, I, I think the project is um, meets the findings. I find it compatible with itself. I appreciate the uh, materials um, seamlessly working with the original house. I think it's a nice design. Um, I too agree with uh, committer, committee member Wong about uh, maybe a tree protection plan for the camphor tree. And um, I would like that condition if it is approved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I think it's a very well integrated project. Um, I think that you know the challenges again is these of the renovation is if you look at the setting of the lot, lot the lot the lot itself, uh, it does taper to the back. So any adjustment of a of the garage, you'd impede going to the uh, I guess that'd be the northeast uh, into the backyard and any further west, it sounds like it'd be imposing uh, it'd be a large cost and it would be imposing to the neighbor to the west. So um, I think the location of the, the, the garage is where it is and I think it's, it's adequate. Uh, with the addition, again, to the, if you look at the footprint of the home relative to the lot, it tapers back. So whatever addition they did add is, is really the only location you really could put something uh, and, and get, gain the, the usability and square footage that was proposed. So uh, I, I tend to agree with uh, Committee Member Wong and Lake Con that is an approval project and I support approval this evening. Do we have a motion? Commissioner Lake Con. Wong with the motion. I propose to approve the project with a, a tree um, protection plan on the camper, uh, eventually be agreed and uh, followed through by the, the, the team. Commissioner Member Wong with the motion. Uh, is there a second? Uh, the motion, I propose to uh, approve um, DRC 19 dash, I'm uh, sorry, DRC 19 dash 92 uh, with the condition that there's a tree protection plan for the camper tree in the front. Thank you very much for the motion. Is there, and can we, uh, can we member Lake Con with the second? Okay. Thank you. Roll call, please. Thank you, Chair. Committee member Chow? Yes. Thank you. Committee member Wong? Yes. Committee member Lake Con? Yes. Vice Chair Batnich? No. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll move on to our next agenda item for the evening. Agenda item number five, design review case number DRC 19-78, 880 Oxford Road. So, uh, staff report, please. Good evening, committee members. Uh, DRC 1978 for 880 Oxford Road uh, is an application uh, for proposed uh, front yard driveway gate uh, fountain and impervious coverage in excess of 25% of the front yard area. Uh, the proposed driveway gate will be of steel construction and measure five feet six inches in height with six foot tall pilasters on each end. Uh, the uh, Excuse me, the pilasters will feature a white stucco sand finish to match the details found on the home. Um, impervious surface area in the front yard will make up 37% of the total front yard area. Uh, it will consist of light beige colored ashlar in variety of sizes and antique surface finish uh, to match details uh, also found on the home. Uh, the proposed fountain will be located in the center of the front yard area. Both the base and the vertical feature are made of cast stone. Uh, the vertical feature found on the fountain will measure six feet in height with a finial at the top end to match uh, details found on the home. Currently, there are five olive trees located on the project site. Three of them are being proposed to be relocated. Um, according to the Arborist report, the uh, trees have uh, outgrown their narrow planter and are recommend recommended for relocation. Uh, staff can uh, 
staff finds that the six foot tall vertical feature is uh, incompatible with the legal neighborhood as a similar feature is not present anywhere in the neighborhood. However, the details and materials used on the fountain are compatible with, with the home itself as are the, um, uh, as is the gate. Uh, the gate also preserves sight lines and allows for visibility through the gate and does not create any hazard to pedestrians or vehicular traffic as they are set back uh, about 20 inches from, or sorry, 20 feet from the front property line. Uh, that concludes staff's presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions uh, for staff or committee members? Seeing none, uh, is the applicant present? Oh, sorry. Yes. Sure, I just wanted to ask um, staff if there was, um, you know, what kind of communication there was with the applicant as far as the compatibility of basically the whole project. Uh, I'd say there's significant discussion, a lot of back and forth and uh, in-person meeting with the project, the owner and uh, their architect and landscape architect. Um, I believe the owner also has a presentation they would like to give as well. So uh, I believe they will address staff's concerns over compatibility. Any other questions for staff? Seeing none, uh, the applicant is present, yes? Yes. Uh, if you could please state your name, address. Uh, Bruce Alberts, and this is with respect to 880 Oxford Road. Thank you, and you are the homeowner or the architect? The homeowner. Thank you very much. If you could please present uh, what you propose and any details that you think are pertinent. Sure. Um, I presume all of you have the presentation in front of you. I believe so. Uh, yes, we do. I, I hope so because I don't know how to screen share. <laughs> but I, I um, you're referring to the presentation. It's this presentation, right? That's that yes. Okay. It was supposed so to be all, all the documents. We've all received that. Yes. Okay, very good. Ho hopefully all of you also received the, uh, the letter that was drafted by my wife and I, um, and hopefully you've had a chance to read through it. I know you all are busy and appreciate uh, your time this evening, uh, but perhaps what I'll do is start with the presentation. Um, so this is a restoration and preservation project. Um, my wife, Erica Alberts, and I are the owners of the home, and we sought out Robert Erickson as the landscape architect, who some of you may know, and Tom Courtney as the contractor, again, as, as I presume as some of you may know. Um, moving to the first slide, uh, we provided an owner letter to the city because we really wanted to express what we're trying to do here. This is really a project of, of passion for us because uh, we, we really love the community and character of the neighborhood. We've been longtime residents and community supporters. We have a great passion for early century homes, and in particular, Wallace Neff. We're preservationists and are restoring the home and have carefully selected a very experienced restoration contractor and landscape architect uh, to create a landscape design that beautifies and is compatible with the neighborhood. We're incorporating characteristics normally found in Wallace Neff homes, and we plan to live in the home for the rest of our lives. This is not a project that we're gonna complete and move on from. This is something that you know, we're, we're putting our, our blood, sweat, and tears into this because this is a home that we're gonna live in for the rest of our lives and will then become part of the San Marino community. And we wanna preserve this for the San Marino community. Um, we received 100% neighborhood approval from the residents along Oxford Road, the two houses to the north and the two houses to the south. And for all four of those residents, not only did they approve it, but they indicated that number two, that uh, it's compatible with the neighborhood. And then we also received approval from the other two neighbors, um, two of the neighbors behind us, uh, there was one that was not, not responsive despite three attempts. Actually on that one, four attempts. So I made significant attempts to, to get them, but they did not respond. I actually heard them inside the home once and they didn't come out. <laughs> In any case, 
The other two neighbors behind the home approved it as well. Uh, all of them appreciated it. When I met with the neighbors, I spent uh, anywhere from half an hour to an hour with folks reviewing everything. And so they have a clear understanding. Um, in fact, the neighbors on Oxford have visited, some of them have visited the home. Uh, we've walked them through it. We've talked to them about the home. We've talked to them about the front yard. So um, we have taken great pains to ensure that the neighborhood uh, is comfortable with the project. Uh, the, the landscape design proposal is on the next on the next slide and uh, shows you a combination um, of the entryway, the courtyard, and then the surrounding landscape. Now, one of the reasons uh, Marlon mentioned earlier about moving the trees forward, the reason that we're moving the, the olive trees forward, in addition to the fact that they're, they're um, encroaching and currently where they are, they need to be moved to survive. But the reason we're moving forward is because there is no landscaping on the front of the home. It is, it's, it's just grass. And that in and of itself is incompatible with the neighborhood. So we want to get some foliage in front of the home. The second reason to move it is there are some significant architectural details. There's a cathedral window and a fleur-de-lis um, plaster piece on the home that currently can't be seen. So that will move it away. It'll provide foliage of the front and greenery and show the characteristics of the home. Move, moving to the next slide, um, which shows a overhead view of the neighborhood, the two homes to the north, two homes to the south, and the homes behind. Um, and then I've circled and read our, our home. And then alongside there, we put the, the percentages of uh, impervious coverage for those various homes. And you can see that the homes on Oxford Road range the two, the two neighbors to the north are roughly 32%. The neighbor to the immediate south is 35%. There's one neighbor at 26%. And I highlight that because the homes that are most similar to, to our home are the two to the north, if, if you've gone by the property. And those are in the 30% range. And then you've got the other home at 35. The reason is because of the, the scale of the homes and also the size of the property. And if you try to constrain it to, and we try, but if you try to constrain it down below that, you, you really suffer the problem of not being able to highlight the property. So for example, if you look at the property that's 26% on that map, you don't see the home. The home is hidden. And, and that would be a shame to do that to a Wallace Neff home. This home is really special. And um, we designed it in a way to really showcase the home. And what Wallace Neff um, uh, accomplished in his, in his homes was to use a courtyard as welcoming arm, inviting folks into the home. And then he used the, the courtyard and, and the surrounding Material, planting materials to enhance the home. Oh. His own his own personal residence just up the street on Orlando has has a, a full wall and gate and fountain and impervious coverage. Now that coverage is I believe close to seventy five percent. Now we're not approaching anything close to that, but my point is that Wallace Neff himself believed in these types of courtyards. The other, the other fact or the other point that I'd like to raise is that based on our research, based on our discussions with folks, um, it seems that the design of this front yard was actually never completed to Wallace Neff's um, full, full intent. If you, if you look at Wallace Neff's Bruce, Bruce, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you please mute um, the, the party that's... Thank you. Thank you. All right, please continue. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Well, I'll just make the point very quick. Um, but it seems that this was not the design, his final design. He built this home for his brother-in-law. And um, there are some stories about why it wasn't completed with specifications, which I'm happy to go into. But suffice it to say that it doesn't seem like this was his final design. It stopped. We're trying to complete it, in essence. In essence, that's what we're trying to do. Um, on the next page, we have the architectural materials. 
and we, we've been very careful to select materials that are consistent with the home. So you heard from Marlon, who has indicated the compatibility of materials. So we're very careful to select materials that are compatible with the home. Uh, the fountain um, has been incorporated in the courtyard for the following reasons, and I'm on the next slide. Uh, it represents a very common element of Wallace Smith architecture. If you look at Wallace Smith homes within San Marino, uh, the predominant uh, number of homes there uh, have fountains kind of as a component of the home. And they're compatible with the neighborhood and our perspective. Um, the next door property does have a fountain, albeit is a, a low stance fountain. But the fact that no property just in the immediate north or south has a fountain, I don't think is incompatible with the neighborhood. There's a fountain there. We're proposing just a different type of fountain and one that is befitting to the home. Um, if, if there is a problem with the height, we, we can discuss perhaps the height of it, something that might be more acceptable if that, if that works. Um, but we do feel that a fountain is a really important aspect of a Wallace Smith home. Um, the surrounding neighbors welcome the design. Um, the the um, finials uh, of the roof match what we found for the fountain. So it, it presents a compatibility as you move through the courtyard into the home. So it makes sense to have that continuity. In addition to that, this serves, as I mentioned, as a welcome, welcoming element of the portrait. Uh, so on the next page, you see an example of a fountain, and, and also there's a shot of the home finial. So you can see how those tie in from the bottom to the, to the home. The one on top, uh, on the top right, um, mm -hmm. is an actual picture of a fountain that we took just um, I don't know, several blocks from the home. Um, this fountain here um, is in a home that is of a similar nature. It's not a Wallace Smith home, but a similar type of style home. And uh, thought that would be a nice picture to at least show you how that can be incorporated into the home. Um, on the next page, you can see the, uh, the gate, not the gate, but the fence that we had originally proposed. And we originally were, were going to put this type of a fence in um, and in discussions with staff, Marlon indicated we've had many discussions with them. Uh, and so we took their feedback and we did eliminate it. Um, the, the style of this, this quote unquote fence isn't really a great name for it, but it's also not a wall uh, because it has a lot of um, transparency through it. But we got the design from homes in the area plus at Caltech where they use this design. But we did eliminate that. That was already a compromise. We really wanted to put it in, um, but we understood the, um, the staff was not supportive of that. So we did eliminate that and replaced it with, with, with a hedge in essence. Um, the entrance gate um, to the property, um, I'd like to just uh, address that as well. Um, there are uh, only two streets in San Marino that face Huntington's Library, which I'm sure all of you are well aware. Uh, and clearly Orlando, every home there, um, I think every home there has a gate. Um, and then there are two homes on um, uh, Upper Oxford with gates as well. They have double driveway gates. Ours is just a single gate. So we designed it with a single gate and then put, pushed it back 20 feet so that um, it didn't impede upon uh, the, the, the sideline as you drive up the street. Uh, we also, one of the reasons it's, it's uh, appropriate, again, for Wallace and, Wallace and architecture, in addition to that, we have had issues with an open lawn area. It became basically a picnic ground for folks visiting the Huntington Library. So uh, every week, I personally went by and picked up trash from the property. Uh, and then we also had some folks that, that walked up the street and we had some folks walk up there when my wife was there alone uh, outside of the home which was not comfortable a comfortable uh, situation um, but in any case I think for being across from Huntington Library that gets 750,000 visitors a year that is a consideration to have at least some level of security uh, which was another reason for for a fence that's a little bit more structured but we did away with that and we just settled for the, the gate, which we pushed back in concert with discussions with staff, as well as 
put in the hedge around it. Um, moving on to the, the next slide, um, there are 14 houses on Upper Oxford, nine have hedges, so those are very common, and two have hedges plus entrance gates, so 11 out of the 14 houses have hedges, and two have entrance gates, and those are both double entrance gates, ours is just single. So if you space it out from 1040 Oxford to 940 Oxford to 880 Oxford, you're spacing the gates out sufficiently um, so that you're not having gate, 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 but there's sufficient spans in between the homes so it is compatible and looks compatible from our perspective with, with that aspect. Uh, I put in a photo of the 940 Oxford Road. Uh, Mr. Roberts, yes. this is, uh, we, we, we have the, we've already reviewed the entire slot deck. If there's anything more pertinent that you think uh, you'd like to provide, but we, we already know what the design is and what the oh. intention is. And we will have a question Q and A portion uh, right after this. So if you'd like to please uh, wrap up your comments, that'd be appreciated. Okay. Um, all right, uh, I guess um, maybe what I'll do is um, uh, and move to the last slide and end on that, and maybe just make a couple comments prior to that. Um, that um, just to let you know, in terms of the fountain, um, Wallace Neps home has a fountain, as I mentioned, and that one is close to eight feet, I think it's seven feet, six inches. And then there's a ha another home on Orlando with a fountain that is uh, just over six feet. And that one is almost directly down the street from Oxford, as you look down Oxford. And then just to the um, east of that, there's another home, a much larger home, with a fountain that um, is at least the height of Wallace Neff's home, perhaps a little bit taller. So when we were looking at fountains, uh, in terms of the scale of the home, we thought six feet would be you know, a minimum good size to have for the fountain so that you could actually see the finial. The objective was to see the finial just over the hedge so you could see that in conjunction with the, with the roof line and the finial on the roof. We've really put a lot of time into thinking this through, honestly. Um, this is, as I mentioned, a project of passion. And um, we are really trying to do this not only for ourselves, but the spirit of Walt Snap. We, we feel if he were, he passed away in 1982, um, and we, we feel if he were here today, he'd be proud of what we're trying to accomplish. So on the last slide, I'll just summarize that uh, to get to the end. But we have utilized water-friendly plantings um, that uh, mitigate the current landscape water usage, which disappointingly is 470,000 gallons a year just for landscape irrigation. It's ridiculous. So, and, and, the, and the other thing I'll mention that, that isn't in here yet is, is that we have gone through great pains um, in collaboration with the landscape architect to find plantings that are very green, that are not the typical uh, um, drought resistant plantings. They're very green. In fact, I have samples here. If you want me to show them up to the, to the screen, but we were using beautiful lavender and um, uh, really green plants that, that uh, accentuate the property and um, uh, will bring much more uh, green landscape to just having a lawn that's there. Right. Thank you very much, Oscar. Um, uh, if you could just, I'll, oh. I'll, provide, I'll give you one more minute. We have to, we okay. have to, yes, thank you. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll summarize it in uh, um, 60 seconds. Um, the um, improvements, as I mentioned, we feel are compatible with the neighborhood. We're maintaining the single driveway entrance. We've got 100% neighborhood approval right on our, meaning on our Oxford Road, just to the north and south, the actual homes. Um, and um, all improvements are actually compliant with the city code. I understand there's also design review committee uh, considerations, so I'm not discounting that, but uh, just from a technical perspective, they are. Yeah, and we, we have thoughtfully and thoroughly prepared this over a two year period um, to close to a two year period in order to ensure we're doing the right thing. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, are there any questions for the applicant from committee members? Seeing none, uh, committee member Wall. 
Eva, can you unmute? Thank you. Yes. Uh, really quickly, uh, Mr. Alberts, uh, can you confirm the height of the fountain is six feet from the base of the fountain if you have a pedestal on it, or is it really from the ground level up six feet? Or do you have anything it's from, it's from, underneath it to bring it actually a much higher net height? Right, right, good, good question. The, the fountain is gonna sit flush to the bottom of the fountain, so it's six feet, in essence, from ground level. All right, second that, question. That's, yeah, no, it's a great question, because that's why we wanted to just, just the, the hedge is four feet, and as you look towards the hedge, um, in order to really see that finial, combination at least it would Thank you. be preferable to second, have it at the level. The second question if I may is that I understand the 70 percent impervious percentage is beyond the city code uh, and the material being used on the hardscape is it in any way either permeable or porous or in any way that the water can actually go down to uh, replenish the underground water base? Yeah. So two, two points, you mentioned 70, that, that was a figure I was using for Walsnef's own home. Our, ours is at 37%. Sorry, comment? Um, we're, we're, we're at 37% impervious. Yes, I said 37, yeah. yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I, my, my mistake. I, I thought I heard the other number. Um, uh, so the answer is yes, we're designing it such that we've got some stoves that are porous that actually will absorb water and then they drain down. Um, similar to a French drain, not, not exactly the same because it takes a little bit more time of percolation. And then what, what we've designed as far as the landscape is surrounding that, that as water, as water um, comes onto the property, the slope of it will push the property into the landscape so that it actually gets natural water as well. But for the pavement material itself, is it in any way porous or permeable or pervious? Uh, we have the the contractor um, on on the call, I believe, as well. Tom, are you on the call? To unmute him. Are you on mute? Is he calling me? Looks like it's oh, listed as Tom's iPad. Is, is that an individual that you're trying to speak to? Is that your uh, your your general contractor? He's he's on now. Oh, sure, he's on. Hi, Tom, are you there? I guess he's not present. Okay. His... All right. um, uh, so, if, yeah, if you can't answer that question, that's fine. Uh, is you, do you know uh, what if... Bob, Bob, are you... I think the architect is on the line as well. Bob, Eric? Bob. Okay. Uh, if you can <laughs> unmute Bob. That's Mr. Erickson, right? Correct? That's correct. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. The material itself is not pervious, but there are ways to take the surface drainage and keep it on the property by various methods instead of dumping it all on the street. So it is not, the concrete itself will not allow water to go through to answer your question. Okay. Does that answer your question, Committee Member Wong? I understand. Got okay. it. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any other committee member questions for the applicant? Committee Member Chow? Uh, yes. Um, I know it's noted somewhere, but uh, if you can help me, what's the height of the gate and the, the hedges around it? The hedge is uh, four feet. And. Um, See, the gate is, I think Mar Marlin had that. Uh, uh, the gate is five feet, six inches, and the, uh, the pilaster is six feet. Yeah, that's right. Thank okay. you. Any other questions from committee members? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, we'll now open to public discussion. If there's any members of the public who'd like to speak about this project, uh, now would be the time, or if Eva, you've received any comments? No, the city received no additional comment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> no public comments at this time. We'll move to community, committee member discussions. Uh, Vice Chair Batnish. Okay, so um, I see how much love went into this design 
I see how much effort, passion, time, probably expense went into this. And I took in a lot of what you said in your presentation about Wallace Neff properties and, um, you know, honoring the property, honoring the architect, honoring the architecture. Um, I think if this house were sort of an island somewhere, I, I might tend to agree with you. I think that what your um, design misses is true compatibility with Oxford Road. Um, you know, one of the, the things that was told to me when I joined DRC as a, as a tip for evaluating projects is if I drive down that street and see this project as it's, you know, fully built, am I going to go, oh, look at that? Is it going to be sticking out and standing out to me in a way that looks really different from the rest of the street? And that is my overwhelming impression of this project, is that it will really stand out in kind of a hey, look at me way um, that doesn't quite fit into the subdued, the sub subdued elegance of Oxford Road, um, which is, by the way, my favorite street in San Marino. Um, so I think that there are that it's just really big. It's a lot of impervious coverage. It's got a gate where really no one else, it, the gate will really stand out. Um, I think there's just a lot going on here and it's just a very big, big project that needs to be scaled way back. And I do appreciate, again, I want to reiterate how much I appreciate someone really taking into um, taking in the uh, into consideration the the building and the architecture and honoring all of that so I don't mean to discourage I just mean to say although I know that you have spent a long time on this I would like you to come back and try again with a lot more subdued elegance that we see on Oxford Road and a little bit less big look at me elements. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing what my colleagues have to say. Thank you very much. Uh, committee member Cal, please. Um, yes, I think the, uh, I, I definitely hear the passion of the effort uh, Committee member uh, Batnidge already pointed out it's 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 obvious. Uh, I have the uh, the, the same um, feeling toward this project. Um, I think these four incredible homes align on the east side of Oxford. Um, it's really it's it it creates kind of a park like atmosphere. Um, when you when 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 I tried to visualize, I stood in on this on the street in front of your house for easily five minutes, just trying to visualize. I walk all angles. I just can't see a gate there uh, with kind of a hedge fenced look. Um, as much as I think this is a wonderful design, it'll be a beautiful standalone. But to be there, uh, you can't really compare your house with the further south homes uh, with walls, you know, not even on the, the ones on Orlando. Uh, it's just different. You are in a, such a, 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 a pressure, precious uh, spot, really, uh, to, to be able uh, to really form a beautiful uh, section of the San Marino, especially close to Huntington Library. So I also very hesitate to, um, really see such a, a tremendous um, uh, a change. I, I just think it's, it's not really truly compatible with, with that uh, immediate neighborhood. 
Thank you, Committee Member Chavez. Uh, Committee Member Lakehorn. Um, thank you. Uh, I see what the other, my other colleagues are saying about kind of the largeness of the project. Um, I also feel with the applicant uh, that the, the picnicking on the lawn and um, and the entrance to the project, the property, I could really um, sympathize with them. And I see that because when I see that, Lawn, I think of an Easter egg hunt. And I always think my first reaction to the project was that, oh shoot, I'm not going to be able to see the house anymore. And it's going to break up that beautiful um, presence that we see on, um, on Oxford with the three walls and homes in a row. Uh, but as you explained the project, and, and it made me think that the height would be reduced and I would we'd still be able to see the beautiful homes. But uh, like the other committee member said, that it's hard to kind of visualize a project so large in that area, in that premier spot. So I'm kind of torn because I really am so appreciative of someone who's taking on a project like this, a home like this. It takes a special person, and um, I really, um, I really appreciate and I'm grateful that there are people out there that are doing this to support the project as much as I can. So. Um, uh, I, I, one aspect I really like about it is the single gate. I think that's really nice. Um, and it really goes, it goes with the st style of that architecture and the, uh, and the elegance. And I think that single really makes it um, nice. Um, 20 feet back is unusual and nice because of the sight line. Uh, I'm just having trouble visualizing that in the middle of the yard. And, it, and I think the fountain is fine, um, um, and the impervious coverage I'm not concerned about. I think it's fine. Um, I, I have the Walls Connect book, and I already, I already had gone through it, and I already have all the San Marino houses tabbed to myself, and I think that, um, I think the design is nice, and I think it's um, compatible, uh, but I'm just having concerns that it's not as compatible in that Part of the, the city. So I also would like to hear what others others have to say. Thank you, Committee Member Committee Member Wong. Right. Um, I think the owners has um, put in a lot of effort into the project and it is a matter of fact, on this stretch of Oxford, this is the only Wallace Neff house. So if we try to look for comparable ones in the stretch, there is actually none. So by that definition, it would be different from the neighbors. I appreciate the feedback on the fountain. When I was out there, I actually see a worker wa walking on that spot and the person is close to six feet and it is really not obtrusive at all. So, and I appreciate the cap put on it, which echo really the uh, um, Northwest corner of the house on the top on the roof. So a lot of details indeed. And I like how the low, um, partition wall on the south side to echo that in the north. The sheer effect of the size of the front lawn by itself is a huge endeavor. Maybe we are too used to seeing the grass lawn right now that it is nothing, but I agree with the assessment that it seems incomplete and it is not bringing out the best of a NAF project. We all know that can be historical reasons. And you look at the neighbors, they have a carport, which no, no, no other else have it. So if we are looking for comparability, I mean, it is not in that kind of identical. So I appreciate the work done right now. And I also appreciate the answer given to the impervious area that the owner and the team really take into account of uh, being water smart and really taking care of the stormwater uh, management during rainy days, and given the scope of the front, I am worried that if we try to reduce the design, it would be probably not as good, maybe a little bit better than the lawn, which is a plain vanilla, but it still is not bringing out the character of the property. And how many Wallace Nerf do we have left? And I really want to give the owner a chance to do it right. And I think the team has put in good effort. 
I would support that. Thank you very much. Um, I, I would also want to commend the, the homeowner. Um, the, the task that you've taken upon yourself to, to stay true to the Wallace Neff architectural style and, and you know, the research you've done uh, is very commendable. Um, I, I agree in part with your, your comments that it, it was not a complete design. I think it, it, there is aspects missing. I don't think um, if you do look at his architecture and his home specifically in San Reno, there is anything like a expansive lawn that, that, that you share. Uh, uh, however, when you look at the home and where it's situated among its, its immediate neighborhood and immediate neighbors, uh, the legal neighbors, uh, every home is, is, has, you know, a set, has, art, has landscaping, hardscape, uh, but it's minimal. And it's, it's, it's minimal in the sense that when you look at each property from the streetscape or from the, the human scale, from the sidewalk, uh, the emphasis is the home. Uh, what I feel like is being proposed will not necessarily, will in a way, draw away from the home in the back um, and then bring focus to, to other elements, which, which would be not what I personally uh, gather when I walk this stretch of Oxford. If you look at the homes uh, to the north and to the south specifically, um, you know, any landscaping or hardscape uh, does not form a, a hard barrier. Uh, there are, you know, trees and shrubbery uh, which do not exceed, uh, at least along driveways or, 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 or entranceways, do not exceed two to three feet. Uh, your proposed hedge of four feet plus a six foot gate plus a five and a half foot pilaster it's, it's going to change the entire streetscape. It's not being true to this neighborhood. Uh, it might be true to the home, as uh, Vice Chair Benish said, uh, in a, in a you know, remote location, not visible on this stretch of Oxford, where only homes like the homes that are visible anyways, outside of Huntington Library are visible to the east. Um, you know, I think the scale uh, and the feel, the park-like feel would be completely uh, eliminated with this uh, change. Um, I, I do, however, agree as well with uh, Kamima Lakon. you know, the single driveway in the center with the approach uh, will emphasize and show the stately manner of the home. Um, you know, where you, the existing gate lies with the, uh, aligned with the facade of the home is appropriate. Uh, my take is any additional fencing or gates would not. I think anything that you'd want to achieve with privacy or added privacy and security would have to be accomplished with uh, landscaping uh, uh, and preferably landscaping that is lower than four feet. If you walk up and down that street to the two homes to the north and one north, one to the south, every home is meticulously landscaped with landscaping that does not exceed the height with the exception of a few um, uh, trees. Uh, you know, if you go two homes to the south, that, I wouldn't say that's a very fine example of your neighborhood. Uh, mm -hmm. It is your legal neighborhood, but that, that from that point on, that is where you do have gates and pilasters and full height, full hedge height, uh, full height hedge, uh, and, you know, effectively uh, shielding the properties off from the sidewalk. Um, again, it's the unique situation and the uniqueness of your property, uh, which I've always admired. And I think it's, again, one of the most beautiful streets in all of San Marino. And I, 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 I believe uh, the homeowner, Mr. Alberts, is, is trying to stay true and uh, uh, improve um, the neighborhood uh, and, and, and the home and restore it. However, uh, the proposed uh, plan, I think, is not going to be compatible with the neighborhood. Um, and I think there definitely needs to be changes uh, before there is an approval project here. Um, I am in, in amenable to a continuance with the, it, given the comments you've heard. Uh, however, if, if there is a motion for denial, we'll, we'll hear it. Uh, Committee Member Banish, you have a comment? I have a comment and perhaps, a, uh, perhaps that will lead to a motion. Okay. Um, as I said, I see the love <laughs> and uh, that went into this. Um, 
I'm try whenever we talk about a continuance, I always ask myself, if this is scaled back, if this is, you know, if this, can this be uh, approvable in maybe one meeting, possibly two, then I feel like a continuance is in order. In this case, I believe that our comments are really unanimous that all of the elements are off. And they're not off by a little bit, oh, they're all off. So I don't think that this is a really appropriate project to propose a continuance on. I think this needs to be looked at with a, with a new fresh proposal. Um, so I would be inclined to make a motion for denial and I'm going to make a motion for denial. Regretfully, but still, I don't think that this can be approved in, in one meeting or even maybe two. Is that your motion? That's my motion. There is a motion on the floor uh, by Vice Chair Batnish for denial. Do I have a second? Committee Member Chow with a second. Roll call, please. Thank you, Chair. Co Alternate Committee Member Chow? Yes. Thank you. Committee Member Wong? No. no. Committee Member Lacon? Yes. Vice Chair Batnich? Yes. Chair Chen? No. Motion carry. Project D9. We'll move on to our next agenda item of the evening. Agenda item number six. The board said no. Yes, she canceled it. The, the can, I, can I just ask a, um, a matter of order? I'm sorry? Matter, can I just ask a question on a matter of order? Sure. sure. Uh, the, the staff uh, approved the, the hedge and the gate. Um, Homes in San Marino put up hedges without even going to DRC. The gate at 1040 was added in the last few uh, months. Mr. Roberts, if you have questions um, regarding the projects, can you please contact staff directly? We won't take any time further for the. For the but I'm just wondering what the next step is. If, once we get rid of the lawn, you know, what is going to go there? That's the question because so, the lawn can't remain. I understand. By California law, we're spending yeah. too much money on water. Staff Cervantes, can you please reach out to the homeowner to further discuss the options? Of course. Thank you very much. We'll move on to our next agenda item, agenda item number six. Thank uh, you, Chair. Chair. case number 2002. Um, sorry, do we have a question from the public? Uh, Never mind. I was just asking uh, Eva to unmute me. Okay. Uh, uh, we're on agenda item number six for 4200 Monterey Road. Staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is an application to replace the roofing material currently on the home and the detached garage. Um, currently, the home is improved with a natural wood shake material, and the homeowner is proposing to install the composition fiberglass material manufactured by Certainty. The product is called Landmark Shingle TL in the Shenandoah color. Um, staff finds that this color would not be compatible on the existing home. Additionally, the, um, the immediate neighborhood staff was not able to locate any home um, improved with compositional shingle material on it. For that reason, staff is not able to support this request. Um, staff would like to know that there is one amendment to the staff report since we issued the report to you, to the committee, and that is under the neighbor approval letter portion. Um, since we issued a report, uh, Mr. Chang has submitted a, one additional neighbor's letter, so bringing the total approved to eight and no response reduced to eight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for staff? Seeing, the, seeing none, we'll um, ask the applicant. Uh, Dr. Chang, if you'd like to please present. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, let me just, uh, my, I don't know, my computer is coming up. Um, are you guys able to see my screen yet? Uh, no, not right now. Okay. Now, yeah, there's yes. something. Sorry. Yes. Great. Right. So again, thank you. I want to thank the committee for, for, the, for your time and actually I mean, for your effort in trying to preserve sort of the standard of living in, uh, in San Marino. Um, Dr. David Chang, I'm presenting my, uh, my, this case on behalf of my parents. Um, 
And, uh, and I've also reviewed the staff report and I also appreciate Eva's time and, and effort in, uh, in reviewing the proposal. Uh, I would just like to sort of, um, sort of lay out briefly the basis for our request for consideration, which uh, basically boils down to number one, the original material no longer exists. Uh, so we need to look for a new material and thereby we have to go through the committee for, uh, for approval. Uh, we have looked at other material on page one but our contractor point out that they may pose a weight issue. It would add approximately a thousand extra pounds to the roof. Uh, in addition, uh, they, based on their experience, they do not like some of the materials on um, page one because they say they're brittle, they're easily damaged uh, in the shipping process. They actually told me that, that to expect certain uh, pieces to be broken uh, upon arrival from shipping. And so it's, it's not about material that we recommend. So we opted to go with page two material and thereby we're here now today. I believe that op selection will now stand out in the neighborhood. So I'll present some, some of the pictures as a basis for our request for consideration. Uh, and I would like to point out that the sources of image are all obtained directly from Google. So these are public images. They are not modified by me. According to the staff report, there are four other properties within San Marino that use this material. And these are the images of the four properties uh, located within San Marino. Uh, and these are all public images from Google. Uh, there are uh, small, there's sort of main two, two main concerns from the staff report. One is that uh, in essence, uh, if I could summarize, roof is noticeable with the median roof pit pitch of the property. And the second point is that there's no other uh, material exists within the DRC neighborhood. I would like to address the second one first. Uh, a, in fact, the, there are four other usage in the city and in all the other cases, the property is the only one within that neighborhood with that material. Uh, and so the, the sort of a statement that no other usage exists within the neighborhood does not seem to have been an absolute reason to deny usage. Uh, and if we were to take a step back, there's sort of a logical chicken and the egg problem. If no other example exists, then no one could ever be first, even when the material is proved for use. So it kind of defeats the purpose of approving a material if someone, if no other uh, uh, usage in the uh, neighborhood is becomes a reason for uh, not approving it. Um, again, it's a chicken and egg problem. I'd like to point out that there were nice support letters uh, plus one neutral letter. Uh, there was basically zero percent objections from neighbors. Um, for coming back to the first point about no other example in the neighborhood, uh, I point out the top two images from two of the four properties within San Marino. As you can see, both the property to the left and to the right of that property with the material that we're proposing do not share the same types of material. So, um, and again, it, it becomes sort of a chicken and egg problem. If that, if that alone is an issue, then no one could ever be the first one to use this material, even though it's approved. Uh, the second point, which is probably, I think, uh, and based on some of the discussion earlier, I think it's, it's a valid concern that whether or not uh, it would be compatible with the neighborhood and whether or not the roof is noticeable with the quote unquote, the medium roof uh, pitch of the property. I would also like to point out that again, some of the other properties that are already using this, uh, this material, for example, 2650 Monterey Road is a two story building also with the mid medium pitch, actually possibly more than the medium pitch with no tree in the front yard. And I would actually suggest and argue that it's probably more noticeable than would be on a one story building with trees in the front yard. So if I could actually just direct your attention to the comparison, on the left is 2650. It's two story and I think that pitch, that slope is much more noticeable than it is for my parents' property on the right, 4200 Monterey Road. It's one story and we have quite a bit of trees in the front yard. Um, I would argue that's probably, that's way less noticeable than it would be on 2650. And yet 2650 was approved for use. Um, there is a uh, comment more or less to the point that roof is noticeable with corner location. However, two of the other four locations are also corner locations. So those are the bottom two. Um, they are both at the corner. Uh, and so that again, it is not uh, a reason. This is not an issue where it has become an issue in the past. Uh, but furthermore, again, we recognize some of the concerns and uh, suggest that there might be ways to mitigate the visibility issues uh, with trees in the front, which is actually what was done with 1310 and uh, Lorraine in 2085 Del Mar Avenue. 
as you can see from these Google pictures, uh, they actually have trees and their property is barely noticeable. And, and I believe, I, I, I don't know for sure, but I wonder if that was the basis for the approval uh, about 10 years ago. Again, this is Google image of our house. Uh, again, so very similar to those two corner property. Um, this is a recent picture, just to see, just to show that that Google image is actually not an outdated picture. It is a fairly uh, recent uh, photo. So conclude by just repeating that the basis for our request for consideration is that the original material no longer exists. So we need to come before you to ask for your consideration. Other material on page one was recommended against uh, by our contractor because they may post some additional weight issue adding approximately about a thousand pounds. Uh, but even, uh, even then, um, the materials themselves are brittle, easily damaged, um, and it would, it would just add considerable time and cost in maintaining such a roof, and um, so they would not recommend them. Uh, and we believe that our selection will now stand out in the neighborhood. So again, I appreciate your time uh, and effort in uh, working on this committee and serving on this committee and preserve San Marino's uh, way of life. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any questions mm -hmm. uh, for the applicant from committee members? I have a question, maybe. Yes. Did, um, did you consider the presidential TL? TL um, mm -hmm. And was it staff that recommended the landmark or was the presidential an option? Yeah, so that's a great question. So uh, both of those are on page two, and it was uh, simply sort of a, a choice of my parents to pick one of the two. Uh, they would be more than happy, I'm sure, to go with the other one. Uh, it was a close call. I remember talking with them, uh, and it was a close call, and they, for whatever reason, decided to pick the Shenandoah color um, as oh. opposed to the, uh, the other one. It's a little but, yeah, that was brought up by Eva uh, in my discussion with her yesterday that that's a that's an option and I guess the way I fill out the application for my parents I did not indicate that that was an alternate choice because an application asks us to state one clear uh, choice so we picked our we put down our first choice we did not know that it was an option to indicate we could indicate a second choice okay and it was it the color of the Shenandoah because I don't I didn't notice a, a color um, similar to that offered in the presidential yeah we have a kind they're of okay they're okay with other color mm -hmm. But there wasn't something about the way the the roof material looks on no. the land versus the presidential. No. Uh, aesthetically, no. Mm -hmm. It was a it was a very close call, and it was simply because we did not know that you can indicate two choices. Uh, we if we knew that we would have made this process earlier, we would have indicated both choices. Okay. And did staff did staff recommend either one or equally, or did they prefer one? You mean staff like Eva? Yes. Uh, Eva didn't recommend either. Okay, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I didn't think they, it was up to them to oh, recommend us. Did not ask for recommendation. Yep. I don't think it is. I thought that um, I thought that's where the direction came from, and I was going to ask staff, but we weren't oh. asking staff questions. But I was going to ask Eva that. Okay. No. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? Committee Member Chow. Yes, um, a question um, to the applicant. You talked about contractors saying that, uh, of course, uh, this um, roof and material that um, the staff is recommending is heavier, right? No, no, no. This one is, uh, so forget, again, staff member did not make any recommendation. It was our choice. It was the page one material uh, which would not require going before a committee, as I understand it, it's the page one material that would be heavier. And that's why we are opting for page two. Page two is, um, page two is where right. my understanding is we have to go through before the committee. Right, let me, let me uh, rephrase my question. So, so the page one material, mm -hmm. um, you're saying that, uh, yes, it's heavier, right? Mm -hmm. uh, is that going to, do damage to your 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 house? Is that a, a structural? Is there a structural problem, or or you you're just saying that it's heavier? We're just saying that it's heavier. Uh, it, it's uh, and also less of that issue. But uh, the contractor told us uh, that the material are brittle and easily breakable, um, and so it would require quite a bit of maintenance going forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One more question. What, yes. 
What is the material? It's wood shake on the roof right now? Yes. Do you say that's no longer available? Is that because we're not allowed to put that on or you can't get the material? I don't think we're allowed by fire code, if I understand correctly, and Eva can correct me, but I, I believe that's a fire code issue. Eva, can you confirm that? Um, that is correct. Um, started at the beginning of this year, the city council has adopted an ordinance to effectively prohibit installation of new wood roof. Um, so no more re-roof with the wood natural material. But can you re-roof re parts of your roof if you have one existing? Yes, only up to 10%. Oh, you can only fix 10% and then Correct. you can't put out, oh. Yes, the idea is to effectively il eliminate the use of this material. Wow. Any other questions for the applicant? 10 of the class. None, uh, thank you very much. We'll open to co uh, public comment. Any members of the public to speak for or against or about this project? Seeing none, were there any submitted, Eva? No. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll close public comment portion and move to committee member discussions. Uh, committee member Chow. Um, I think I'm going to follow the, the, the staff's recommendation on this. Um, I don't really have further comment. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Vice Chair Banish. Um, <clears throat> you know, I don't feel that strongly about this one way or another. Um, I don't, uh, I do want to say before I really give any, you know, committee member comment that I, I know that we're in a sort of a crisis now, but if, if the city is going to effectively prevent anyone from using uh, wood shake, I think that we as a city need to is that I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is that a city ordinance or is that a state ordinance, Eva? I think it's both. I'm not quite sure about state, but definitely city ordinance. Yeah, I, it's it's not a pointing fingers thing. It's more like, okay, how are we going to serve our residents? And if we're going to serve our residents with the ability to just do something simple like change a roof, we we need to have options. So I would really love to see this the the city um, or planning department or whoever is responsible to kind of work on maybe a committee or something that would hopefully without too much more time be able to. Um, make some recommendations of alternate um, roofing materials because I feel really, really bad that, uh, for example, Mr. Chang has to come and really feel like he has to vigorously defend him his choice for something that really there's just very, very few choices other than wood shake in the city. So um, I feel I feel awful for Mr. Chang for and his parents for and and other applicants who have come before us with the same thing um, since that this was passed. Um, that you know we need to have more options available and a better list and uh, a little more guidance. So uh, I hope that we can do that as a city so that we can help our residents do something simple like change a roof. So, you know, any of the materials mentioned sound okay to me. I don't, I didn't really like the color for this particular um, property that, that you or someone chose. I would like something that's um, a little darker and less, I don't know how to say it, more uniform and a little darker. Um, it sounded to me like committee main member Lacon had some um, intelligence about this more than I do. So I would kind of defer to her. I think she has made a lot of great comments about roofing in the past. So that's, the, that's it for my comments. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, committee member. Uh, I believe the property is actually visible, especially for traffic coming down from Oxford, people who are visiting the Huntington Garden and, and leaving and also through the wandering from both directions. So I'm uh, of um, in agreement that uh, if a more subdued color uh, could be used, that would be great. I feel bad for the owner that there's really limited choices and I uh, commend the owner for really improving the property and make it safer. So hopefully there can be an uh, agreeable solution and quickly get it going. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, committee member uh, Lacon. Um. Well, I have my certainty uh, <laughs> here. Um, there aren't a lot of options um, because of the wood shake. 
an elimination of that. The other one, which I am not a fan of all, and I voted against it many times, is that steel roof material that some of the committee members have found to be appropriate. But I feel that um, presidential shake TL is maybe a little nicer. Um, quality, it looks nicer, but uh, I, would, I would actually appreciate other people's comments on that. Um, the roof isn't very steep. I, I feel it looks a little nicer on steeper roofs uh, when they use uh, a gutter to finish it off like a wood shake roof. So I think a lot of it has to do with the whole picture, you know, when you just can't put change the roof and then leave the broken gutters or the wrong color. Or sometimes the paint on the house doesn't match the new roof color. So there's a lot more to the whole picture of looking nice when it's all finished. Um, and we're going to run across this problem uh, more more often now that we can't do wood shake. Um, so I, I see um, where the applicant is feeling that there aren't any other ones in the neighborhood and how are we going to get around that. Um, I have heard concerns that that um, concrete roofing material that looks like shake could be rather heavy for this type of house and so that leaves me a little concerned. So I am, I am willing to um, support maybe more the tea the presidential than the thank you very much um so uh, i share similar uh, uh comments uh with uh, dealings with uh committee member lake uh, i would uh support the presidential shake teal series uh either in the here i'll help you guys share my screen if, if i may make a comment uh, they only uh, allow. Sorry, committee member. Uh, sorry, uh, Dr. Chang. Let me yeah. just finish this. Okay. And then we'll yeah. So I, I believe either the shadow gray, which we've approved before, or the country gray. Um, I would say either of these colors would work with the home and the style of the home, uh, and they're colors we have approved prior. So I would be amenable to approving uh, a, a motion for either these two colors in this series of um, of presidential shake. Uh, that's my recommendation. Um, outside of that, I will speak specifically about where we stand today with um, uh, the, the situation. You know, we, we are all understanding that, you know, we want to be able to, uh, we want to be able to provide more options to our, 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 our residents. Um, that's without a doubt. Uh, I was informed uh, by staff that the mayor uh, and city council have directed the planning department to um, to work as, with a group to find additional roofing materials. Uh, they are in process to do that. However, given current circumstances, that that effort is inactive. But I'm sure once things normalize, uh, the planning department will continue to research and provide additional materials that our homeowners can uh, choose from, given uh, our requirement to move away from uh, fire prone uh, wood shingles. Um, again, I, I, I would say that this specific home will, it, it's unique. It, it sits actually on an island. Uh, when we're talking about islands, if you walk up and down that street, that home is by itself. To the rear, it's commercial. To the, uh, what is that, southeast, it's commercial. Uh, there is only really two other homes that are can are visible from that location, and those two homes, I believe, have uh, provided approvals. So uh, the neighbors have approved. The home is an island. Uh, the trees that are on that property do hide uh, a good portion of the roof, uh, whether you're standing uh, directly in front of or towards closer to Huntington Drive. So uh, I don't think there's going to be an issue. However, I would make a motion uh, and uh, an approvable motion that the homeowner select uh, the presidential shake TL series in either the country gray uh, or the uh, shadow gray, um, whichever they may choose. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, and I may point out one quick, quick issue. Uh, according to the list that was provided by the city, shadow gray is not approved. This is probably one of the reasons we moved away from the presidential because they only approve one, there's only one approved color. We understand. So, so we, we, per we, our committee recommendation, we we'll, we provide the option shadow gray or the okay. country gray would be amenable. So that's the motion on the floor. Uh, do we have a second. Roll call, please. Chair, um, was may I just confirm, was that um, Vice Chair Batnish that was the second yeah, motion? Okay, Vice Chair thank Batnish you. Who made the uh, second. Thank you. Committee member, 
Alternate member Rick Chow. Yes. Thank you. Committee member Wong. He's on mute. You have to unmute him. Sorry, I'm so sorry. No worries. Go ahead. Yes. Thank you. Committee member Lacon. Yes. Vice Chair Batnich. Yes. Chair Chang. Yes. Motion carry with condition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, now we'll move on to our next agenda item for the evening. That's agenda item number seven. Uh, it's a request for project approval extension at 2195 uh, staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, this, the applicant is requesting for the committee to provide an extension of their prior and original DRC approval. As stated in the staff report, um, this project was in front of the committee and was approved back in February of 2019. The project expired um, on February 2020, which is earlier this year. In the staff report, um, I have stated that we are supporting a six months extension. However, given that we are very close to the six months extension deadline, um, staff is now requesting that the committee can consider extending the project for nine months, which will provide a deadline date of November 6, 2020, that the applicant has to obtain the building permit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Vice Chair Banish. I just wanted to ask staff if the applicant uh, made uh, good progress during that time. Um, during the during that time, it sounds like from the timeline that they did. I just want confirmation of that. Yes, from the time that the DRC approved the project in 2019 to this year, February 2020, the applicant actually took the project through the structural plan check process. Um, unfortunately, it just was not enough time for the applicants to obtain the building permit because they did not have a contractor um, sign on for the job. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the building permit was ready, you said in February? February, correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for staff? Seeing none, uh, is the applicant present? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. this is Perry Chen from SS Design. Yeah, uh, I'm the project designer for 2195 Orlando project. Yeah, okay. this is a single family remote project. And uh, now my client, Mr. Xi, is living in China. Due to the COVID-19, he cannot come here and it's hard time to find a contractor. So my client, Mr. Xi, is requesting to uh, extend the design review approval by nine months. So uh, thanks for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, uh, do we have a motion? Uh, Vice Chair Vanish? Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the project approval extension for 2195 Orlando Road for another nine months. Second, do we have a second? Committee Member Lake, comment the second. Uh, roll call, please. Alternate Committee Member Chow? Yes. Thank you. Committee Member Wong? Yes. Thank you. Committee Member Lecon? Yes. Vice Chair Batnich? Yes. Chair, Chair Chang? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to our final agenda item for the evening. Uh, number eight, request for project approval extension at 2215 Melville Drive. Uh, staff report, please. Thank you, Chair. This application was approved by the DRC back in October of 2018. Subsequently, the approval expired um, in October of 2019. Um, about early March of this year, the applicant submitted a request to extend their approval. Um, staff is recommending a um, one-year approval to allow the applicant the deadline of October of this year to obtain building permit. Um, staff would like to point out that the applicant actually took the project through the structural plan check process. However, because it has been longer than six months, their structural plan check um, has expired as well. So if the DRC is amenable to granting a one-year extension, um, it will provide the applicant about five months of time from now to November of this year to take the project through their structural plan, plan check process again. So when you say again, they will have to resubmit and you will reevaluate the structural plans? Correct, because now we in the 2020 cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, Vice Chair Vanish, you had a question? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like they let five or six months, six months lapse and just did nothing. 
like let let everything expire didn't contact make any contact didn't indicate any why what can we i'm just wondering if there was a lapse really of six months and all of these approvals expired i mean we're talking about a project that was approved in october 18. so if coronavirus prevents the previous around our road um, applicant from perhaps hiring uh you know a contractor that makes a lot of sense to me that they're but this doesn't make sense to me if i understand the facts correctly Correct. Um, I would like to point out that in the staff report, we, we did provide it that the building permit was ready for issuance in April of 2019. Um, and the deadline, um, the DRC approval deadline was October 2019. So that would have already provided the applicant um, um, ample time to obtain building permit. The so building, building permit was ready to mean that from April to April, October, they, they did come to the city hall to pull the permit. Correct. Okay, any other questions for staff? Uh, is the applicant present? Uh, yes, my name is David. I'm with SLS Design. The situation is kind of similar to my colleague Perry, where um, during those six months where the client could have pulled it, he basically was in and out of the country to China a lot for business and just didn't realize, he assumed that the uh, permit was valid for one year instead of six months. So when he came back and was like, hey, can we extend um, everything? Uh, we already assumed that he had everything completed. We did not know that he hadn't pulled any permits yet. So when he contacted us, it was when we first contacted Giba about trying to extend all the kind of approvals. Uh, do you, is your client present in the States now? Do you know? I do not know. So given, if there were an extension, you would not, you wouldn't even know if your client is here in the country. To hire I don't. I don't necessarily know, but I do know his sister is in the country, and she's the one that's been trying to kind of round everything up. So uh, I would assume she would be the one to take care of everything. Okay. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the applicant uh, in this matter? Seeing none. Uh, is there any members of the public who like to speak on this matter? Seeing none, uh, we'll go to committee member discussions. Uh, uh, member, uh, Vice Chair Batten. Uh, I don't, I'm not really inclined to approve this extension because there's an abundance of evidence that nothing was done. This was led to lapse for many, many months. I mean, as again, I understand that the process is lengthy and I understand a delay from coronavirus, but uh, I, I don't think that I would be comfortable with a one year approval. And I think it would be generous for us to offer six or nine months. But I, I'd like to hear what everybody else has to say. Well, so a six, uh, to, to staff, a six month extension would grant them until, I mean, that's not even going to get them there, right? Because it's, it's, it's six months from the October date. Is that correct? Correct. And that would have been last month in April of this year. Um, so at the minimum, if the committee um, decide to grant an extension, it will have to be nine months, a nine months extension. And that will take the expiration date to July of this year, which leaves the applicants approximately uh, less than two months to take the project through the, pro um, the structural plan check process again. And I'm not even confident if that can be achieved. But that will be at the discretion of the committee if you want to do a nine months extension or one year. When you say that can't be achieved, once, let's say they can get the plan or plan check again, will you be able to, will the city be able to turn it within that time? Um, our understanding is that the typical turnaround time for plan check for addition project um, is about three to four weeks. And additionally, planning has to do the plan uh, review again. Um, so that will take another two weeks minimum. Um, so it will ha they will have to act on the project um, next Tuesday immediately. I should manage. 
Yeah, I just wanted to ask, um, gosh, I just lost my train of thought suddenly, I'm sorry. Um, I, I have a question. Okay, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, my question was, if they do another plan check, do they pay for another plan check or is this out of the city's? No, it, it will be a brand new permit and they will be paying for um, an additional fee. It's just the approval process that we went through back to you. I don't know. This, this just represents sort of a lack of respect for the process to me, but I, I'm not going to make a motion. I'd rather hear from, hear okay. from the other. Uh, you maybe you were late, Con, you had a question on that? Uh, no, I just, I was wondering about the staff time on going through the for all that approval and then nothing happening. So. Yeah, it sounds like it's six to eight weeks. So, so they weren't to jump on it, I, don't mind, I believe, like the staff employee said. But they, already, they already went through it all once and now they went through it. Well, I'm not talking about the re, the re, the reprocess of, of DRC. I'm talking about yeah. the actual yeah. submission of plans. So, you know, if you give them a year, a year. Um, to October of this year to, to, to run through the process, which in, I think it's feasible. I would, I would be amenable to that. I think it is feasible. Um, I don't think anything beyond that would be granted. Uh, what I would be cognizant of is if we are adamant to get this done, they would, and we didn't approve the request for extension, they would have to come back before DRC. We would be re reviewing plans. There would be, there would be a lot of time spent and energy to review something that potentially is literally approved. And it would just be to uh, run it through the system again. And, and, uh, Again, we can't discuss what the decisions would be, but it was already approved at one time. So unless they're, you know, it, it's, it's kind of a, there is a reason why this is a discussion among committee members. I think that granting a, a year would be sufficient and they would be able to re, repay for a plan check, get it through the city and then hire a contract to buy. Um, I think a nine month, um, I, you know, to, to speak to speak more uh, from the time of April till March, we didn't do anything. We we can't ask them to independently why that happened. Um, you know, if this is over their head, they have to get to it's over. I think it's enough to have something happen. Um, and I'd be supportive of my extension. Is there any other committee member comments outside of? Uh, Kamima or Lake Con and Lake Con. I do. Yes. Uh, uh, I, based on what I've heard, I, I'm quite concerned of the inaction throughout the process of the owner and the team. And based on what I've just heard from the architect, it is quite unsure to him and to me that there's really determination to meet the proposed new deadline or the extended deadline. So I'm concerned that we are opening a precedent case for people who are, with a lack of better word, missing the system, not respecting the system. Yes, it is true that we as a team and also uh, colleagues from the uh, from the uh, uh, city hall would have to do the work, but it is the system that we have to also respect. And we have not heard from the owner or the owner's sister, they are not present, so as if I'm hearing from an architect who believes that thing could happen. And I do not think that is sincere enough in our opinion. Yeah. Committee member Chow. Uh, I agree with uh, Peter and, and Joyce. And uh, so uh, the more I hear about it, um, you know, the, the more concern I have. So. Can we have a motion? Uh, committee member Wong with the motion. I propose to decline the request for project approval extension of 2315 Melville Drive. That's a rejection of the request, correct? Okay. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> uh, Eva, roll call, please. Yes. Alternate member Chow? Yes. Committee member Wong? Yes. Committee Member Lacon? Yes. Vice Chair Etnich? Yes. Chair Chang? Yes. Motion carried. The request is denied. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, that concludes our agenda for this evening. Uh, we went the distance. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everyone's time. Uh, this was a interesting, to say the least, experience. But I think it it basically carried out almost the same had we been in person. Almost. I appreciate everyone's participation and everyone's um, willingness to uh, jump on this. It really means a lot uh, to to the city and to the to the residents of the city. Um, I don't know if we have anyone present for. Uh, <laughs> open for open. That it. would be hard. <laughs> Do you Do so? uh, Mayor Shepard, uh, we can unmute Mayor Shepard if she has some notes for us before we close. close. No need to unmute me. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a wonderful job in a trying circumstance, and I appreciate this was particularly. Uh, a lot of people attending, even more than normal for any of our, so I appreciate everybody uh, getting through the night, and uh, it was a long night, but uh, good job to take care of a lot of these matters that were pending, so thank you. Thank you so much, we appreciate you. Uh, is there anything else for the evening? If not, we will adjourn. Eva, or anything else? I'm um, um, not sure if we announce that this meeting is adjourned to the June 3rd DRC meeting. Is that a response for Mayor Shepard? Or, or um, is this is just an announcement to conclude the meeting. Oh, it's an announcement to conclude until the June 3rd meeting? Correct. Right. Okay. So we're right. two weeks. In two weeks. Yes. Okay. <laughs> well, we need to see what's going on after that June 3rd. Like uh, once a month, where we resume twice a month. I have a question about um, our term. I, I know my term is ending, and I was just wondering, is there any process for reapplying, applying? How does that work? Sorry. Um, Eva, are you still there? Yes, I am. Um, in terms of reapplying for, um, the, for to participate on the DRC committee again, um, that will be information um, dispersed by the city clerk's office. And I can certainly ask, keep, uh, get in touch with uh, members of the office and ask them to send a, um, an email to all the members with the information. Thank you. Is there an opening as well for a planning commission? Uh -huh. I am not quite sure on that. I will have to double check with the roster. Uh, Mayor Shepard, did you have a comment? Uh, Eva, if you can unmute. Yes. <laughs> unmute her. Oh, there I am. Okay. I was not able to unmute myself. Sorry. At the moment, I'm sorry, there's an echo and a delay. That's part of why I jumped in earlier because I, I'm having trouble with sound as well. Um, we have had a resignation of our city clerk. She was ill uh, the last couple of weeks, not at the city hall. And normally we initiate the uh, notices about who is coming up for term and open positions. And so because of her absence and the COVID crisis, we not conduct interviews. The uh, terms have been extended, if you will, for 60 days to allow us to go through the same process. So if people were up at the end of June 30, um, corresponding with the city order in a, this emergency situation, if you will, I think that we're going to continue all those deadlines and we would ask, I don't think I've been communicated to you, so I apologize for that myself. Um, but the city clerk or city manager will extend the terms, if you will, if that's agreeable to people in your position as well as on planning to get us through the next two months so then we can run the ads, have people interview whether they're the present members or the public and go through the same process that we normally would. And I'm just going to read something that I see that Eva put in the chat, which is that um, because the June 3rd date is stated on the agenda, um, I think that that has to be announced, but we are um, actually the next meeting will be, um, I believe the next meeting will be on June 17th. That's correct. And it says we'll get an email with the explanation. Yes. And thanks for the information about um, reapplying. Okay. So, so I'll, I'll have somebody, I, I think we have a, 
interim, Amanda Merlot, who you may know used to work upstairs, is coming back to help us with the city clerk position in the short term. And we have floated that position out, but I will make them aware that we have this issue on DRC and PC and try to get some information out to uh, uh, your members first, obviously, most importantly, as well as start running those ads. But if you'd uh, uh, be cooperative, let's say, for the next two months as we get through this, a little bit unusual circumstances all the way around, and even more so now with city clerk, and I know there's a planning and building issue as well that might affect things. So we'll be um, in touch with all of you by email, uh, if not in the next two days, definitely on Monday about what's going on. Thank you so much, Mayor Shepard. We, uh, we noted and we appreciate your time uh, joining us. Um, so I will correct uh, for the record, uh, we will be adjourning, but not to the June 3rd date. Uh, we will be reconvening on June 17th at this time. So um, on, for the record, there will be no June 3rd, it will be the June 17th meeting, uh, at which time we will have our next um, DRC hearing. Uh, without any other comments or questions, we will uh, adjourn. Thank you again, everybody. Thank you, Eva, for Hi. doing this. Welcome. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I try. <laughs>